Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first ever day of the StarCraft II Chalmers Championship 2020. Ahead of us, we have two weeks of great StarCraft. My name is Flex, and with me is my co-caster co today, Jock. How are you doing, Jock? Hello, I'm doing fine, and it's great that it's finally coming around to the first uh, group. I've been waiting for this opportunity because... Uh, this was the spike that ignited my StarCraft 2 interest again. Great. Uh, great to hear, Jock. Uh, you're actually a player yourself, and you're going to play later this week. Uh, but let's focus on the group today. So if we look closer to the group, these are the matches today. We are going to start with streaming you Idra versus Hens from the uh, F and TD divisions. And then we're going to show you the losers match and the deciders match today. The other two matches will be played off stream. Uh, we are waiting for the players to get ready, and as soon as they are, we'll jump into our first game. So, this uh, tournament is sponsored by Enet, and uh, we hope that you give them your support later when you are looking for perhaps a new keyboard or a new mouse or other types of electronics. Okay, well... Uh, yes, the first game is going to be uh, a CVP on Death Aura between... Uh, uh, I draw and hems. It will. Uh, all the group games, group stages games, will be best of three matches. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see how they adapt uh, throughout. Uh, while we wait for the players, we can show you the most important, uh, if you ask certain people, but not necessarily. It's, of course, the prizes. So Enet, our uh, lovely sponsor, has sponsored us a uh, prize pool of gift cards to their store. And in addition to these, we'll also award nice trophies to the winner of the tournament. Ooh, I didn't know about the trophies before. <laughs> yes, they are very, very pretty, customly made. Um, so, um, uh, let's see, the players are getting ready now, and we're going to switch over to them now any second. So, uh, yes, let's go to the first match of the StarCraft II Shalmer Championship. 2020. Mm, so in the bottom right corner we have uh, Idra from the uh, Physics Division. Yes. Uh, spawning as the dark grey Zerg. Yes. And in the top left position of Death Aura we have from TD Technical Design Hens. Wow. And wow. Uh, while the game is uh, starting, I want to get our applause bot up open because we have something very fun. Let's see here. Yes, the game is proceeding pretty normal. We have, as usual, openings the fast expand from the Zerg player and the gateway opening from the Protoss. It would be no Forge expand here. Forge on the high ground. Very interesting play to see a Forge on the high ground. Um, it's usually yeah, standard, because in this matchup, you, both players will want to get their secondary base up quite quickly. And with this position that Hens has chosen to put their buildings on, it's going to be hard to easily take that secondary base. Uh, yeah, I don't know what he has in store for us. Maybe he have, have, he has um, he's actually killing one of his own probes as well. Okay. He is? <laughs> yeah, he killed one of his own probes. I think it was a misclick, maybe. Hmm. Interesting. Or he wants to show that he can break his opponent even with the slight disadvantage. Yeah, sure. And if we look at the uh, scouting so far, we can see that Hens has not left their base yet at all. Uh, Idra has, of course, his overlords as he is a Zerg, so he gets the free scouting from the overlords. Um, yes, the free overlord is now passing into the expansion area of the Protoss player. Exactly. So he sees that there's no wall, so he could perhaps be scared that there are buildings on the map or otherwise. However, these are just all in the main base. Or uh, maybe he's doing like the age old uh, Naniva build from, <laughs> from oh, yeah, Sweden, sure. where you took the gateway in the main yeah, and then sure. they're fast expanded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so um, 
we're going to see how it looks. Okay, so let's ask the chat something because this is going to be relevant for our uh, for the tournament today. Uh, how many of you have played StarCraft before, and if so, uh, how what is your rank and so on? And if you have not played StarCraft at all, please let us know. So uh, yeah, if we look there, it's quite even so far as far as the uh, income goes. The Zerg still has their second base up, and the Protoss does not. So the Protoss is probably going to look to take that soon if it's not uh, if Hens is not focused on a very hard one base attack. That's possible. What do you think, Jock? Um. I was losing focus for a second because I was bringing up the chat myself to be able to see what you guys are writing there. Uh, it yeah, looks we'll... like it's a very late expand coming. Yeah, from, it... from now on, I think I have to assume that some kind of push is going to commence. Yeah, I'm, uh, it's so very interesting that we have these defensive cannons because uh, it's not the, a secondary expansion and it's not a one base hard attack. It's a also somewhat of a defensive position on one base. That's very interesting. So these players, of course, are not pro level at all. That's not what's important today. It's having fun. So uh, that's going to probably affect some of their play choices. And if we look at the chat, it says that there are some um, different experiences when it's come to StarCraft. Some have never played. Someone has said that they only played um, Barbie Dreamhouse. Uh, and haven't played that game either. Uh, so now let's see. Okay, now it's very interesting because Hens is going to try to go down on the low base to get the, his secondary base up. At the yeah, same but... time, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I would say there is there is obviously some fear from either as well because otherwise he would have taken the third base by now, I think. So he is Definitely. expecting something to come. Definitely. Maybe he's not sure what uh, Hens is, has prepared for him. Yeah, and Idra gets the full scout off with his circling here, seeing everything. Um, also, we see that Hens is going for the Stargate build here, which means that he's going to go into heavy air units, which could caught, which could catch his opponents off guard. Mm. And at least the scouting of the expansion finally trigger trigger Hydra to take its third base as well. Yes. Often you say that the Zerg wants to be half a base up, so uh, <laughs> when the Protoss gets their second base down, it's good that the Zerg has their third one on the way. He also building some uh, percussionary spores, but he has no real anti-air units. So if uh, Hens could uh, maybe bulk up some of those void rays and keep them hidden from Hydra, it could come as a surprise. I think it's very important what, if the Sergeants will see the void rays now or not. Yeah, he has his Overlord scouting the main base, so he sees the double Stargates, and it's possible. Oh, he already yeah. seen it. Yeah, and okay. he's also seen the void rays with the Sergeants in the front. There he goes. He, he has full, uh, full. Um, identification of the opponent's strategy right now. So he's going for a Hydralisk then himself to get his anti-air up. Yeah, so it seems like Idra has successfully scouted Hens' strategy here and is going to take uh, defensive measures to counter it. Meanwhile... Oh yeah, go ahead. Plus one attack coming up as well with those Hydras and uh, the Hydra speed. Yeah. Going for the Hydra speed first over Hydra range, maybe yeah. he wants to push out or um, at least deny taking a third bench base on hands. Definitely. We'll see. Uh, in the income uh, tab, we see that we can even go to this income tab, which shows the income over time. And here we see that uh, the Zerg player here has been able to focus a lot on their economy. Uh, the, the Protoss player hence stayed uh, in his one base uh, his main base for a long time, which means that he has fallen behind very much in the income. So Yeah, he's almost doubling the harvest. Actually, now he is doubling the harvest of Hans. So I don't know if Hans expected something early or uh, what yeah, his it... opening choice was. But from now on, I think he is behind and uh, really need to take a risk or something to make this work. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um... It definitely feels like uh, Idra is very far ahead in the income, so basically anything he builds or anything he does is going to overpower by sheer number. So we'll see how Hens handles it. Um, meanwhile, Hens just barely has had a little bit of scouting, uh, but basically no, nothing at all. And his vision is very confined around his base, which means that he won't see an attacking army uh, until it's on his doorstep, so to say. 
Uh, I think if, if I think he possibly possibly need to expand about now or maybe try to drag this game out and get Storm and try to make a miracle happen when the Hydras are coming knocking on his door. Definitely. Uh, one way to mitigate the income disadvantage is to wait until you have maximum supply because when you have maximum supply you can't build anything else so it doesn't matter if your opponent has so much more money because if as long as you win with your maxed out army you can still win. But yeah, especially sure. if you have the right Protoss army, it can be yeah. very cost efficient. Yeah, Protoss is definitely known as the more cost efficient, uh, but perhaps expensive uh, race of units. Um, yes. Okay, so now a move out is triggered from Hydra, and he's moving out with his Hydras. Yeah, so we'll see how should, it goes. Should be mentioned, it's not Hydra, the pro player. <laughs> I think yes. it's a fake game in the game. <laughs> but, yes, E.G. Uh... is a very known uh, pro player from way back many years ago. And this is not that pro player. This is a Maybe it's a way to pay homage to his name. Exactly. Maybe oh, he's, he's just a fan. Yeah, probably a big fan. Idra was also a third player. Hmm. So we'll see. It seems like it's have been a quite passive game so far. Uh, Idra is perhaps going to make a large push now at the front door. We'll look at Hens' vision here, and we'll see that he has no idea about any of this until now. We can follow his camera and see how he moves. Uh, he's looking at the fight right now. You can see how he's selecting his units. I don't know, what do you think, Jock? Do you think he's gonna uh, hold this attack? No, I think it's actually too many Hydras. Maybe, maybe if uh, the Zealot was coming out earlier, but I think they joined the fight too late to, for this to be possible. Yeah, definitely. And now. Hans is in really big trouble as his production is starting to get knocked down. Yeah, if we, if we look at the army supply here at the bottom, we can see that there's it's three to a hundred and or a hundred now. So um, this seems to have been a very uh, strong game by Idra. He um, realized that his opponent was very passive and kept in his main base. So Idra was freely able to expand and get his economy up, and then able to just power up with a much larger army. Yeah, decent creep spread as well, I would say. Shown that he has some experience in the game of StarCraft. Definitely. But hey, Hens uh, put up a fight, so to say. He did manage to get, actually get his uh, secondary base up uh, at, in the end. Uh, he actually had the Templar Archive done, so maybe if maybe if uh, this push would have become even later, he, had, he would have started a chance to defend this. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how both players maybe uh, change their strategies for the second game. Uh, this is of course a best of three. Uh, and in that case, what do you think, Jock? Do you think Hens is going to play more or less passively? Uh, and uh, how do you think that would go? It's hard to tell. I, I, it almost felt for me that uh, he was expecting something um expecting something uh, aggressive. I don't know if that comes from knowing Hydra or is that it's just this general experience with Zerg, but uh, I really felt that uh, he was so defensive in the beginning that he was almost blind countering maybe a early pool or something like that. Definitely. And that could also be a very interesting part uh, of, um, of these types of tournaments when it's a little bit lower level that maybe you feel like it's better to have a hard counter against an early attack because that might occur quite often. Um, not sure. Uh, and it seems like Hens is going to get eliminated now. GG yeah. is called. Even and after all the smack talk, GG called. <laughs> yes. He was never in them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but that was um, a very interesting game. As I said, a, li a little bit passive from both players. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how it changes. And if I were to ask the chat, how does the audio sound? Um, uh, is it well balanced? Can you hear both casters? Could you hear the game and so on? Mm, that's it. What they're saying. Big Affy saying in the chat that he was coaching and uh, it yeah. uh, didn't help. Audio pretty pog. It's hard to tell what that is exactly. Barely hear the game is uh, to at least two opinions. Yeah, I can turn up the game in that case. Uh, chat, please let, please let us know about the audio balancing and things like that. Uh, we're ha having our eye on the uh, chat. 
Yeah, I think this is a learning experience for all of us. We are trying to improve. Yeah. At least I am trying to improve my casting. I'm here as a guest cast guest caster. Uh, guys at uh, Lagit organizers was very nice to invite me and let me be a part of their event. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Um, this is going to be a, a very good tournament, I hope. So uh, it's just happy to have you along, Jock. Um, we're waiting for the players to select their secondary map before moving on with this best of three. Uh, the secondary, uh, ter well, what's it called? The secondary match on the off stream between Tux and Seppuku is still zero zero, and we'll keep you posted if that changes. Uh, yeah, so we're just waiting for them to choose this, the next map. Um, so while we're waiting. Oh no, here we go. So, Light Shade is going to be our next map. What do you think about that? Light Shade. I have a hard time remembering the name. I need to bring up uh, my little yeah, Im no shit image over the maps. <laughs> no but, problem. Uh, uh, I'm inviting you to the game right now as well, so please don't forget to hit the... Okay, screen. sorry. I'm coming. Light Shade. Oh, it's that map. Yeah. I actually... I don't have so much experience. Uh, can you invite me again? Give me a second. Oh, there you Thank go. Thank you. I don't have so much experience in the CVP uh, matchup because I'm mainly a uh, mainly a uh, I only play Terran, but uh, uh, for I, I at least like Light Shade versus uh, Protoss uh, versus uh, Surge. I think there is some uh, high grounds that you can take advantage of. Yep. But you have to be careful of the run bys because at least you fur when you're taking your third base, there is very much open open pathways the Sir can take, especially if they start to knock down the rocks. Definitely, yeah. We'll we'll uh, see how it goes for the Protoss player to take their third base, uh, and the game is uh, online. So let's jump to the game right now. Yeah, in can the. You? Yeah, in the yeah, <laughs> no problem. In the top left part of the map, we have the uh, purple Protoss representing technical design. It's Hens. Clap, clap, clap! Exclamation point! Clap in the chat for the clap bot. Exclamation point! Clap. Yes, and in the bottom right corner, we once again have the grey uh, Zerg player from Physical Division. Yay! Clap, 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 clap. Is the so clap audible on stream? Otherwise, we'll turn that up as well. So let's see, turn it and it's. Oops, there we go. Turning it down, perhaps the graphics here. We see some support from Hens coming out in the chat. Needs it is one point down, it is best of three. Opening gateway again. Uh, yep. I think. Uh, it be interesting to see what he does this time. I think the last game got a bit one-sided because of the opening choices of Hens. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see uh, what happens. We have a similar opening with the, the Zerg play. Uh, Idra taking his secondary base very quickly. Uh, Hens has his Billings position in his main base. So we'll see if he has the similar type of passive opening again. Mm, I would say no, because I think at least the gas timing is different. If I don't re recall wrong, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Maybe Hen should have uh, used some hand warmers be before coming into the first game. I don't know what his preparation is, but I can already say that uh, this opening looks a lot more uh, uh, like a uh, normal ladder ladder opening. Yeah. Uh, he's with, that, with that said, I don't know his motivation for the first game. No, he definitely. was probably expecting something. Oh, here we go. He takes the secondary base much quicker this game, which is a much bigger improvement. And when Idra spots it immediately with his Overlord. Yeah, so hard to deny that. Yeah. Though with double gateways, maybe he can get out of depths to uh, make this hold. I don't think it's too unreasonable. Yeah, do you think Idra, Idra is getting his uh, Zergling speed upgrade? Uh, quite early, so he's going to perhaps be able to poke with some links, depending on whether he wants to or not. Yeah, but uh, to me, to me, it looks like Idra will. Uh, I'm not 
100% sure, but it looks like he will allow this. I think he will just continue to macro on his own basis for now. Yeah, he's making more and more drones with here, three, two more. So yeah, yeah. it's going to at have least, to... At least uh, Hens will know if he takes a third base, because he have the probe over at that location. Yeah. And now he's checking for the third base again, much more active scouting. Yeah, a lot, much bigger improvement. He dives the probe in and sees the lair timing. Uh, he doesn't see the uh, drone saturation, so he doesn't know if the opponent is like um, pooling links in the back. But not seeing the third base and seeing a lair uh, should point towards more of a tech opening. Yeah. So and there's also no overreaction at home. So I guess he got the comp the the right read on Hydra right now. Definitely. So we. We'll, this opening that Idra is making, uh, taking the double gases and so on, uh, says that he's going to want to make some type of uh, gas-heavy two-base timing uh, strategy. It could possibly be either Mutalisks, the flying harassment units, or uh, Anidus Network uh, for a more ground-based assault. Mm -hmm. Putting down the Roach Worm. Maybe it is the Nidus Worm. I, would just, uh, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure it's the Muta. At least that's what I would do. But uh, with the Roach Worm down, I'm not so sure anymore. Yeah, the uh, Nidus Network strategy of tunneling you. Oh, here we go. It's the Nidus Network. So the Nidus Network, <laughs> for those of you who doesn't know, is a tunnel system, which can be used to uh, tunnel your entire army between these nodes. And the, these network can drop these nodes anywhere. Um, so, what's important to think about now is where does Idra have vision and where would he want to plant the Nidus Worm to tunnel his army? Yeah, he has at least two good overlords in position. It seems like one overlord is even drawn back a bit to protect it even more, to make sure not a phoenix or a void ray comes out to kill it before the party begins. Yeah, we're having a circling run by into the main, getting a few probes. Forcing some lost mining time. Uh, Hens should be able to handle it, but he's losing a lot of income because there's no probes mining in his main anymore. Nidus worm detected. We have a Nidus outside Hens' base, and he does not have vision over it. So there's going to be an assault of ground units coming into Hens' natural base, his secondary base, soon. What's interesting is that players still hear the sound when the Nidus Worm pops, so he knows that there's a Nidus Worm that's done, that's finished up just now. And he should now see the army attacking his front base, so we'll see what happens. He still has some units in his main base that he could pull and defend with. Yeah, and the cannons at the front is really helping out right now. Otherwise I think he would be pretty done, but with these two cannons maybe he could hold. There is a lot of uh, lost mining time. The, the harassment in the main really did it. Really did its damage. Yeah. And yes. the the roach uh, queen attack here is. It seems to be uh, not going to get defended now. Uh, no. Way too many Zerg units. They're sitting under production now, so everything that's coming out of the gateways is immediately killed by this roach and queen army. Yeah. So. Now you have going after the probes in the natural as well. Yeah, so uh, Hens can no longer produce any units out of these buildings and he uh, he's trying to make a stand in the main base. But even if even if he keeps his main base alive, that means that Idra can just drone up and get a much, much bigger economy. It seems like he have an unfortunate gateway <laughs> placings to oh, his yeah. cell locked in as well. <laughs> It's the SimCity aspect of uh, StarCraft 2 showing off there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to be honest, I, I don't see I don't see this holding. There's more cannons coming up, but uh, I, f I think it's pretty clear that this army is coming up the ramp. Yeah. Even Ravager is morphing in now. Ravager having, using the ability to send Bile up in the air and uh, Possible to nuke down pylons and cannons with it. GG is cold, so. GG! Yeah, GG, this should officially conclude the first match. It's a 2 0 victory to Idra, putting him yes. up into the winner's match, but with that means that we'll have to follow Hens in the loser's match afterwards. Yes, no one is out. No one because is out yet. Match. There is still hope for 
physics division in today's group. Yes, and there's also another physics division representative in the in group B tomorrow, uh, but I don't think there's any other TD design uh, division representatives. So uh, Hens has to have a good showing in the uh, lower bra bracket to uh, save his division. The betting it all on one player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard in the chat here that so, uh, someone says that he's only been playing for six hours. I'm not sure if that rumor is correct or not, but uh, it was in that case a very good, strong showing for. Only if that was six hours, days. it was actually pretty, pretty great. Yeah, it was very good in that case. For those who don't know, StarCraft 2 is a really hard game. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see here. Uh, maybe Hans hasn't played enough to know that the layers can surrender uh, after after having lost, so usually you say GG and then leave the game, but uh, it's probably going to be quite quick. He wants his last glory on the stream before he's leaving, putting all his probes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that immortal there in the back would have been really helpful earlier, it's too bad it, uh, it wasn't out earlier. Yeah, so uh, since this match was quite quick, then I've talked to the off-stream match between Tux and Seppuku, and it seems like we're going to be able to jump into that match immediately after this game. Oh, what's the score in that? Uh... Uh, I'll check. It seems to be 1-0 to Tux. Oh, a long game. Yeah. Probably the first one. So, yeah. This is a, a classical salty ladder move to hide, hide buildings in your main, trying to prolong the game as long as possible. <laughs> yeah, at least he's not tearing and lifting off his building and putting it in the corner. That's the like, <laughs> grounds of uh, warnings from the tournament organizers. This is yeah, that, quite quick. <laughs> that's why you play Taran. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Saving the last probe. <laughs> Intentionally. <laughs> what? Is there... Oh, there's an yeah, there is a uh, refinery. Yeah, I bet uh, it should or be gone now. Later, I should say. So, let's congratulate Idra on his win, and then move on to the secondary match. So, yeah. could we please try the clap bot again? And give a big round of applause for Idra and see whether or not it works. And to those guys in the chat, Gigi was actually called, but it was uh, way before the game was actually over. Is the audio level for the clap bot good? Good. So uh, when we're ready, let's start the next game. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, I believe it was a 1-0 uh, for Tux here in the representing the software engineering division. And we'll see uh, whether or not Seppuku representing um, Seta Mechatronics can pull it back. Mechatronics and automation. Uh, so. Did you... Jock, did you get invited to the lobby? Uh, I don't think you did. Okay. Uh, so I was out of game. Try to invite me again. I probably missed it. Yeah, but the, g the game has already started. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> what we could do is that we could... Um, you can join in for the next game, is that, if that's fine with you. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Maybe I can watch the stream, actually. Yeah, you can watch the stream. So let's so go yeah. to the game. So, in the top left corner of the map, we have representing mechatronics. Seppuku, currently down 1-0. And in the bottom right corner, representing software engineering, we have Tux. Big round of applause for the players. 
and they're copy pasta is going wide it. in the chat. Right? Yeah, <laughs> we have we see this. Everyone who's cheering on software engineering, please change your colors to the software engineering turquoise that Quick has in the chat, so we can clearly see the fans. Wow, nice claps. Uh, hopefully, there's a color that's similar to uh, the uh, mechatronics as well. Ah, clap, clap, clap. Oh nice. I missed I miss typing clap. Oh, you miss typing clap shit now. You <laughs> have to wait until the game is over. Wow, I am cheering for software engineering. Wow, nice spam in the chat. Okay, so, oh, oh shit, we are having action already. We have a. Oh, where is it? Oh no, it's a defensive uh, cannon opening. Uh, we have a forge on the low ground by Tux. So yeah, this is very it. orthodox for the matchup, I would say. Yeah, uh, it's definitely not uh, uncommon on these levels. Uh, in the pro levels, this has been a very big part of the meta a few years ago, uh, quite a few years ago, uh, but it's still a very classic opening. Even in Starcraft 1, Protossing opening Forge Cannon base is very, very standard. Maybe not in this matchup, though, but we'll see. Yeah, is it two barracks as well from um, yeah. Receptico? I yeah. think this could uh, put on some pressure, but... Uh, there's not a Reaper coming out. If that was a Reaper, I think the, the damage could be... Uh, I think the damage could almost be game-ending to get the Reaper in that early. So it's definitely a gamble, I think, to open Forge first. Yeah, versus Terran, definitely, because the Reaper can... Uh, the, Terran, the Terran player has a unit called the Reaper that can jump up the ledge into the main base, and there there's no cannon. So against a Zerg opponent, the Forge Fast is much more of a standard opening against, than against Terran. Yeah, with that said, though, it's a Marine, so I think uh, Tux will sit pretty safe here with yeah. his expansion for a while. Definitely. Uh, his play is probably going to pay off economy-wise, but we'll see how it pays off in the uh, army compartment, because uh, Sepulchre yeah, is going to get a much larger army much quicker. He might even be safer now, because uh, a Marine cannot jump off the cliff, so uh, to bust that front down with the cannon will be even harder. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I don't think the Terran, the Supuku, is going to actually be able to pressure the Protoss, except if he gets something like a siege tank that outranges the cannons, or a transporting flying unit that can put his marines in the main base. Uh, yeah, and we have first blood, a cannon killing a, a scouting SCV. <laughs> uh, yeah, first yeah. blood is called. Yeah, but he, he sees the defensive cannons, and Tux, on the other hand, has had no scouting at all. So, uh, interesting strategies here. Mm. Septic, you must really expect that there is an expansion behind that. Yeah, definitely. If you if you see, uh, he can only see these things, the two cannons, but he should definitely be able to guess that there is a base behind it. Okay. So, as we said before, Tux is now very much in the lead. If we look in the income graph, we can see that Tux has been in the uh, in the lead for a long time. So it's up to Seppuku to capitalize on his army advantage right now. Uh, or else he's going to fall behind soon, very quickly. Yeah, I need to get those orbitals up and going, so he can mule his way to victory. Definitely. Uh, yeah, we'll see. He he gets his own bunkers, he he's, looks a little bit more defensive positioned as well. Uh, so it's a, a, a quite a passive play from both of the two um, players, similar to last series. Yeah. I really yeah. think that uh, Tux is getting away with a lot here. He goes double robot Twilight and starts researching his upgrades. Oh yes, he's very powering so hard to be able to spend the money he got from his two bases. Uh, yeah. We also have a two Zealot scouting patrol uh, right here coming towards the Terran Natural. And it's going to be the first time he scouts the opponent and those lots they scouted hard. Uh, and he sees that there's a base up and quite a few Marines. Yeah. Even though he lost those zealots, I think he will be pretty happy to see that bunker. That indicates that he's not going to receive an attack soon, so I think that's actually pleasant. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if we look in the income... Yeah, Tuxis has been in the lead for a long while, but he's... Seppuku is turning it around now, when he's being able to get his second secondary base up. So we'll see. It, we, it, thinks, it feels like we have a game on our hands. Yeah. I, I think uh, it's okay as Tyrant to be a little bit, a little bit behind in economics. Uh, it's, yeah, it's more like uh, when the mule starts to hit, you catch up before that uh, the Chrono Boasting is way stronger in the absolute early game. Definitely. But now it's going to be very interesting because Tux is going <laughs> for a double uh, Disruptor drop. 
This is, this a, is an advanced play. Yeah, this, this is, is going to be very interesting. Let's follow this. So this is going to be really interesting because uh, disruptors, for those of you who don't know, they can shoot out a big explosive ball that explodes after a long time. Uh, and during that time, the actual disruptor is uh, immovable. So we'll see if this harassment is going to be able to produce a lot of damage. It feels like it's going to. Is, does he have speed on that war prism or is it just me? I, I don't think he has speed. Okay. Meanwhile, Supuku is heavily supply blocked and he's going to make a supply depot right now. But he's been supply blocked for a long time. And now he sees the war prism. Let's see if there's a reaction. Let's look at his cam. This is what Supuku is looking at right now. He's not looking at the uh, disruptor in his natural. Boom! So he now lost... Now he sees it. He's like, oh, what happened here? So now he lost only two SVs though. Now, fam. Yeah, so uh, it's um, a lot of APM in the chat, I see. Oh, here, this is going to be good. They are still on cooldown, though. You can see the cooldown. Oh, he shot both. He he did both shots. Yeah, this is this is why this, this is so hard yeah, for this micro. Is, this is uh, this is real damage. Yeah, now now he's really getting in there. Yes. Oh, he's flying over a missile turret. Oh oh, I survives. It's, it will be really expensive though if that war prison die. I would almost be ready to sacrifice eight workers for getting two disruptors to the war prison. Yeah, uh, almost. We'll see how it's going to continue. Uh, Tooks right now, uh, if we look in the units tab, has five stalkers, four disruptors, and immortal and a lot. So his army is mostly disruptors and not much else. So if Sepuku just would scout and see this, he could definitely have a, an attack right now. Oh, it's a scan. Yeah. Speaking of that, right now Sepuku scans his opponent and see there's it's only disruptors and a few stalkers. Yeah, this is a super technical army. I think it really will come down to if Tux can control this. It's Having six five disruptors. disruptors. Six disruptors now. <laughs> this is very it's, it's very hard to push into six disruptors because you can almost always have a disruptor ball out there, but uh, it's also very hard to not slip up on that mic micro. Definitely. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how what's going to happen now. Uh, meanwhile, the Terran is going into Fusion Core, so we're perhaps looking at Battle Cruiser soon. Uh, very interesting tech choice, because disruptors can choose, shoot, shoot up and Battle Cruisers are flying units. It so, could be that the Liberator range, maybe. I'm not sure. Well. Liberators are yeah. quite more APM required, so I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, now he sees... Oh, oh! Siege tanks out range. The disruptors, so he lost was at four disruptors immediately. We can look at the lost tab, we see it's three disruptors. This is why this is a hard army to control. Yeah, but we can see the range of the siege tanks here that uh, the disruptors can't get too close. Uh, yeah, well, let's see if he warps in something with these uh, warp prism. He has to be really careful to not lose the last three disruptors because if he does, I'm not sure if he can even hold a counterattack. I don't think he can hold a counterattack now. He, he has, what, five units at home? And his yeah. production, he, lopped, he dropped a lot of buildings before, but he's not spending his money really. So if we look, he has 1500 minerals and he's not doing anything with them. Yeah. So I expect they. Uh, well, if there is a disruptor, there is always a possibility. Yeah, sure. Yeah, now he's, we're seeing battle cruisers in the production tab, and these battle cruisers are going to be completely unanswered by Tux's army currently. So, uh, oh, oh, he, yeah, he, he, he works in Celos, he draws the fire, and he blows up two of the tanks, but he loses two more of his. Uh, yeah, so he traded two Celos and two, two disruptors for two siege tanks. Not that efficient. No. But, but if he. It's up a lot of bases though, so it's, yeah. it, it's actually okay to be a little bit. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, it's okay to be not efficient here, Definitely. I would say. Definitely. He really needs to start getting to work with that money though, it can really... Yeah, and he's going to double immortal production, so he's definitely not at all ready for this uh, air switch. No. I, I wonder if the first Batacruz will teleport across the map, or if he uh, will take it with him when he pushes. He has one ready in his main and it's waiting, so he's probably pulling them up until he has two or three, and then he can really put on the pressure. Yeah. 
and he also takes a secret hidden expansion at one o'clock. This is going to be yeah. interesting. That's a nice play. And he has mule shit out of that expansion. Yeah, and he, he scans his opponent to see what's up. Uh, he sees just gateway units and the robo still working, so he, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. We see Storm researching from Tux, which is another micro heavy AP intensive uh, strategy. Yeah, I actually think it's a good move to not jump over the map because with those two scans, you see that there is no anti air in production, so. The longer he waits, I think the harder the battle cruiser will be to counter. Yeah. If he could just get a few more. Wasting some disruptors there, that's unfortunate. Yeah, if he's like Tux is uh, stonewalled by this defense and he's not sure what to do, so he's just macroing up, he's now taking bases all across the entire map. And he's also getting more tech, not just Storm, but also Dark Shrine, so let's see if he can do something with those, I doubt it, because there's so many missile turrets preemptively around the entire base of uh, Sibuku right here. This yeah, is... but Septicu doesn't have much money left to mine. He's almost out of minerals now, I would yeah, say. Oh, Except oh, for the hidden base. He teleported the battle cruisers. Oh! This is probably the game deciding moment right here. Oh, he's going to lose. Lose one of them? No, no, no! Oh, oh, oh! He kept it alive! The question is, can the stalkers hunt it down? Yeah, no, they're going back. And there is friendly banter in the chat. Yes. It's like these guys almost know each other. Yeah, and there's quite a few kills right now on the battle cruisers to kill the 10 probes. Meanwhile, we're having some uh, worker on worker action uh, on the north base. Oof. Yeah, I'm not sure he's trying to make a heart out of pylons here or something. Um, but I'm, but I, I don't think. Like 10 kills is enough. I would actually say Tux is in a massive lead right now if he just could get the anti air up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. He's, he's ahead by 20 workers. Uh, however, we still don't see anything in the production that can uh, help with the air units. Oh, we are now having a very large immortal push. He's, he, he, he looks at the unit help guide and sees that the immortals are the counter to siege tanks, but not just A moving in like that. And uh, not the marines though. And now we have the battle cruisers. Completely Risked. decimating the army. Yeah. He lost one battle cruiser, but he killed everything else. This position is 100% lost now. But uh, you do also have a stock army at home, so... Yeah, he has quite a few stalkers at home as well. So it's interesting because Seppuku right now is going to have little to no economy. He lost his north hidden expansion and he has got basically no workers in his natural at all. So he has these battle cruisers, but if he doesn't attack now, he's going to lose. And yeah, this the north base is uh, trying to find a way to put them, but Tux's ex expensive, uh, well, let's say expansive expansions are uh, occupying all the spots. Yeah, it's gotta be demoralizing to see all those expansions when you send out the SCVs. Definitely. Yeah, probably realizing now that he should have moved out a long time ago. Yeah, well, let's see if he does, because he still has uh, six battle cruisers. Um, we'll see. And it's also an interesting strategy, I see, that uh, Tux has gone completely for shield upgrades, which is an interesting strategy. Uh, scanning to see just how... Oh! Battle cruiser jumping to the uh, one of the bases. Ooh. Are we going mm -hmm. to see a base trade here? Or... Will, will Tux go back and defend, and, and will the battle cruisers fall back to defend? It's a very interesting army movement here. Oh, okay. Tux is pushing Tux his is army to the front door. Uh, this is gonna be enough. This is definitely gonna force back the battle cruisers. Definitely. So, uh, they are on the way on the minimap, you can see here. But they are quite a far way away. There they're showing up. Oh. Yeah, this is working out really great for Tux. Losing one base is not, not such a problem because you have a lot of them and he has also a lot of cash. So even sacrificing this army, I'd say, would be okay at this point. As long as he's keeping the battle cruisers at home. Definitely. Oh, oh, is, are we going to see repair on that uh, orbital command? Yeah, we're seeing repair. Or else it's going to burn down. So now the battle cruisers are dead. Are you sure we're seeing repair? Yeah, now. Okay, yeah. my stream is a little bit behind. Yeah. the uh, In the armor supply, Seppuku has a lot of a lot of bigger army in general. Uh, if only he knew he could probably kill the random cannons and perhaps snipe some more bases. Um, he is, is this the same 
orbital command that has been flying around the map in a big circle. <laughs> it's aye, a traveling aye, aye. It doesn't even have a few cities loaded into it. Yes. <laughs> so those three have gone on quite a sightseeing tour around the game, around the map. He's scanning some more. Seeing, oh yeah, there are a lot of probes here. We also have a single battle cruiser trying to do some harassment. And he mm -hmm. trades it for, I think, a stalker and four probes. It's very risky to teleport immediately to the opponent's base because then you can't teleport home. Yeah. Definitely. But, seeing as the stalkers are at the bottom of the map, jumping to the right side of the map here is an uncontested move. You probably will get this base as well. Definitely, that was perhaps just a very big brain move of showing one battle cruiser at the south base, like, oh, take this one, and then it takes all the other battle cruisers and goes to the east base when the stalkers are down south. So now he's Yeah, and now also having his third up in mining. I see. I definitely say there is uh, come come back the life hint for Septuaguaya. Definitely. Uh, the problem that Tux is now, he's now gotten the uh, memo for anti-air, so he's now building lots of phoenixes. Not sure if they, those are the perfect air counter, but they can at least shoot up. Yeah, they definitely shoot up. They don't yeah. shoot down. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Void Race would probably be a better choice, but uh, yeah. uh, I think the Phoenix has... Or, as, as long as he's building out the air, I think he and and, and he's spending his massive bank. He has uh, almost four K minerals now, so he he has sellouts for days if he wants to as well. Yeah, we're seeing some lovely banter when he's not microing phoenixes, but when he parks them there, Sepuku has time to respond. You see, he's looking at. Uh, can he see them? Has he noticed the phoenixes at his third base? Uh, he's too too busy mi microing the chat instead. Um, there is missile turret at the third base though, so this will not kill all the SVs. Yeah, no. Oh, oh, he teleports the battle cruisers to try and to try and get the phoenixes, but did the phoenixes mm -hmm. get the battle cruisers? They're so fast. They're so fast, and now the shield upgrades. Oops, the shield upgrades were now a good choice because the shield upgrades for the protoss works for the air units as well. Yeah, I'm not sure this fight is winning though. The, oh. the phoenixes doesn't do a shit ton of damage if it doesn't hit light. No, yeah, Phoenixes are an air unit counter, but not an armored air unit counter, and that Cruises are very armored. Even the air upgrades as well, versus, he has a double shield upgrade and one arm of air, versus zero upgrades on yeah. the battle Cruises. And if we look at the battle Cruises, we see that they have quite a few kills between them, 17, 16, 14, and 2. Yeah, if this was Red Alert, they would all be general battle Cruises yeah. here. Oh yeah, but they have ranks here as well. So we have sergeant and a captain battle cruiser. So yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Oh, yeah. Do you know what the highest rank is? Probably captain, right? What did you say? The the largest one? Nah, the highest. Do you know what the highest rank uh, is? I think it's like general or commander or something like that. If you reach like like twenty five or thirty something like that, I'm not sure. But yeah, but now we're seeing a, a much better air counter. So now he's getting Tempest, which is a long range air to air or air to structures unit. So this is going to be much better against the battle cruisers. Yeah, um, it's also a big late game unit. So I think this is this is a great way to spend his uh, spend his bank. Yeah, but now it's quite risky because now we're having the battle cruisers again jumping in, but they're able to move away when the soldiers arrive. So this is this is quite the game we have. It's very back and forth. This is a great game. Yeah, it's hard to call it now, I think. I, I, I would say that Tux is in the lead, but uh, I don't but look know. Look at the worker count. Sepulchre has evened it out. Oh no, no, the bat cruisers has to get out of here. Oh, there's so many soakers now. Ooh. And they survive. We'll escape though without devastating damage. Yeah, he has, he, he, even though he has a lot of workers, they're not really working in Seppuku's base, and he has a few loaded up and everything. Yeah, I think it's time for maybe the uh, we'll be telling the main to go find a new home as well. Definitely. If, so, the thing that scares me is that when this fighting commences here, he will not have the expert APM to uh, take new expansions, and therefore Tux will uh, Tux could win this according to me, but I'm not sure. And uh, Seppuku never moved up his tanks, this base, so he has no anti-ground help from the tanks in the natural. Oh, the storm on the repair in the this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now now the, the real counter here in the Tempest is going to take care of these battle cruisers. Yeah, this, this is going to be real troublesome here. 
Yeah, the VCs were quite clumped up. Wow, the, the banter in the chat is alive. It's a betrayal in action. Yeah, blinking up to the higher ground and uh, the, completely circumventing the tanks in the natural, except for the archons moving into the tanks. Yeah, yeah, this is looking very troublesome for Seppuku. Yeah, now now it's gotta be over. This is uh, Seppuku came back many times, but from now I think it's finally over. Yeah, I think I think so. But it was a very close game there. He had uh, very very large of a comeback. It was very close to call there for a second. Yeah, he was actually fighting it quite quite well. I, I would have said it was over before, but he stayed in the game and actually made his posi position playable. But uh, even if he kills this army, I, I would say the damage must must have been dealt here. Yeah, yeah, and you should never really. Uh... You should you shouldn't call the game too early in these types of scenarios either because these players are not pros so they're not able to like capitalize on mistakes and really end the game when they can. Uh, passive play could open up for more comebacks. But yeah, now if we look in the income right now, we can see the story of the game that the Battle Cruisers has done a lot but not enough to compensate anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so now we're seeing I the final I push. The army is going home for uh, Tux because now the boys are pulled as well. Yeah. Oh, can we get a storm here with this high tempo? Oh, storm? No? Okay. Now uh, the Tempest is gaining your superiority, I think. Yeah. So this army we're seeing right here is the last of Seppuku's forces. There's not going to be anything else left um, after this because he has all his workers here attacking. So this is going to be the final push and it's not going to work. But that was a very good game, I must say. Yeah, well fought by both players. Definitely. Quite evenly matched, I must say. They are almost played for 25 minutes, so that's a pretty long start of two game, I would say. Definitely. When it comes to half an hour, usually the map is starting to run out of uh, valuable expansion positions. Yeah, we can double check. Yeah, the Tux's bases are very mined out, at least the first three or so. Yeah. Yeah, so this means that we're going to have Tux moving on in the winner's match, facing uh, Idra. And that is going to be off stream, and we are going to cover the loser's match, because there a player is going to be potentially eliminated from the tournament. And First elimination of tonight! Yes. Uh, between Hens and Supergo, yes. So that's going to be uh, a real nail biter. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about this chat? Are you happy about the results? Are you sad? Let's see some clap in the chat. Second best StarCraft game ever, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this game actually holds some merit though, because the plays were evenly matched. Yeah. Do you think <laughs> it's going to be more or less of an even match in the loser's match? Uh, I think... Uh... Uh, in the losers match, no, I think it's pretty much open to both the players to... Uh, it's, it's hard to call, I would say both have a good chance there. There is no, like, massive favorite, I wouldn't say. Yeah. I would probably say that the Septicu showed showed me more this game than Hans did, but I'm not... I, w I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it beyond Hans to turn it around. It's another matchup as well. This is, uh, he would face uh, the Protoss. Uh, yeah. In the last, he will face he will face the Zerg in his next match. His match is, is the face Zerg, so that actually makes quite a bit of difference depending on uh, what matchup he's good in and what not. Definitely. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna take a few minutes break to get the uh, next game going. So uh, I'm gonna put the counter here to 19 o'clock. Let's see if it shows up. There we go. So and it's when we we'll... <laughs> and when we will be back, we'll have the next game ready for you. Be right back.
Welcome back. Uh, this is how the first rounds of this um, group went. So we are now going to show you the losers match. Okay. Uh, Drock, are you with me? Yeah, unfortunately. Hello, you cut out? Okay, so I, I was not muted. Okay, do you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, Queen's sleep, uh, clean sweep in the initial match B, even though it was a very close second game. Yeah, definitely. But uh, well, let's see. Let's see if we don't have closer matches now. So we're going to show you the losers match right now, and then we're going to move on to the deciders match afterwards. Uh, so let's see how it goes. The game is loading up as we speak. It's going to be uh, on light shade again. So it's uh, the map we saw from the first series. There are seven maps in the map pool, but the players seem to uh, have their favorites, so to say. Yeah, I think probably light shade is the map I hit most times on the ladder when I'm uh, doing ladder sessions myself. I think the, the least amount of players has this map planned. I think almost everyone is uh, in agreement that this is an okay map for all races. Sure. Okay, in the top left position, we have representing the technical design division. It's Hens. Clap, clap, clap in the chat. Yes, and uh, a little bit faster introduction. In the bottom right, we have Septicu from uh, Automation and Mechatronics because the probe is already moved across the map, and I'm not sure if it's up to Shiki business here. It I is think up. it's a can rush coming up here. Yes, it is. We have a forge in the main base, and we have a hidden pylon. However, the scouting SCV from Seppuku saw it as saw it as it left the uh, main base. It actually glanced about uh, of the probe, but the player must not have noticed. Excuse me. So yeah, this is going to be, be very suspicious what the probe went. Yeah, but he must have not noticed the probe. So we are already in real action right here. Yes, every second is yeah. important for Septic now. The faster he moves his SCD up to the main, the faster he will know what's coming for him. This yeah. is not a 100% all-in though, because the gateway is constructed in the main. Yeah, Seppuko is not scouting the main base, he puts his SCV in the secondary base. I'm following his camera now, and he he's not at all thinking about this. So he's, he's dropping an, uh, a bunker to, to block the natural, which is a good strategy, but he has still no idea about this cannon rush. Yeah. And having and high hopes for, I'm having high hopes for tonight's first cheese. Yeah, first cheese of the tournament, actually. He, he, yes. he's, he should see the... Oh, he's, he's rallying an SV. He, now he sees it. Now he sees it. He's now... Is it too late, though? Uh, he loses the first Marine, and the probe is still alive, and it's not a full wall-off. So another probe could aid it, but we don't see another probe on the map. Oh. Yeah, I would say the only options now is a very fast bunker or a factory, something of those... Things needs to come down yeah, this immediately, is I think. very troublesome right now. Yeah, we are, we are having offensive cannons built by the Protoss player here inside the base of the Terran, and these are going to start shooting at his very important base structures any second. Realize yeah, this is a, this is a, he's in deep trouble now. Yeah, this is very deep trouble now. Very, very. He, lo he loses the few, S few marines he has. He's trying to relocate. Let's see if he can save his SCVs as well. I honestly think that the relocate is the right move at this point. Definitely. But since the cannons are quite far away from the ramp, he should be Ooh. able to save his SCVs. And look on the other side of the map. We have a bunker on the expansion slot. Yeah. And also a barracks. That's very interesting. So. Will he try to l to land the command center on the other side of the map, or he has not placed it yet? So he, he right now he's losing a lot of mining time, uh, and the Protoss is following him uh, with the probe. This is quality entertainment right here. There is no cannons at home, so this could actually be cut pretty close. If uh, yeah, there's not a single cannon at home. Have out? It's only yeah. a cell out there. He can uh, start like one marine as well. Yeah, and he's decided a, a command center placement in the bottom left, so he's going to relocate his main base there. These cannons yeah. are no longer doing anything in the uh, in the old Terran's base. This is very exciting. Has yeah, three marines, 
and a bunch of SCVs. I think actually a move for the main is possible here as well. Yeah, there's, there's no cannons. There's only one sellout. There's going to be two sellouts, but uh, the SCVs are focusing on mining instead of attacking. Yeah. Of course, Septicu doesn't know this as well as we do because we have yeah. all vision and yeah, overall he, the map. Yeah, he so. should definitely expect there to be cannons in the main. So, in, yeah. in that case, it wouldn't have been a good idea to pull the SCVs there. It would be a very hard call to make in game, I realize now. Yeah. Okay, so we have two sellouts. Oh, the SV could repair this bunker. Oh, it is. Wow, there's a nice micro here. It's a real. This is a real game on our hands as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a real slugfest. Starting out with a successful cheese. Now he's cannon rushing his own natural in defense. Yes, yeah. this is questionable, I would say. Yeah, but, and, the, uh, and the base in the bottom is starting to really get online. So this is quite the game. And I think the contain here could actually be. Um, uh, deceptively strong from the Septicu. Definitely, definitely. It will be pretty hard to break this bunker with just one gateway. Yeah, he's, he's going to have. He, he has two sellouts again, but two sellouts didn't cut it before. Uh, no, and now it's. Next time it's gonna be four Marines in that bunker as well. Yeah, and there's no gas income by Hens, so Hens had a successful strategy in the beginning in de denying the Terran main base, but. He doesn't have a follow-up, so now he's he didn't get the killing blow, so now he's falling behind. And very equal in harvesters as well, only two apart. Yeah, definitely. If we look in the income tab, yeah, it's starting to equalize again after the SAVs being on the big hike around the map. Yeah. This is quite the game. It definitely feels like, is this a comeback we're gonna see in the bottom left? Are we excited, chat, about the comeback? What do you think? Wow. This game is definitely alive. That this game is, uh, this is a live game right here, mate. I would almost give a slight advantage to Septic now because if he can contain the Protoss and get his steam and combat shield going, I would say it's a great position. Yeah, like a single siege tank kills the Protoss right now because he only has a few sellouts and that could be like defended by the bunker. Yeah, it would be interesting to see. Oh, Hens is making. A, a gateway across the map that's interesting because it would be interesting to see a nexus perhaps in the bottom right somewhere. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, I would suspect he's going, gonna try to go around the bunker and see where he can find the Septicu. Yeah. I guess that's the reason for that gateway, which is not unreasonable at all. I think it's actually a good idea. Yeah, but he, he, he's, he hasn't gotten the cybernetic score. He has not advanced, Hens has not advanced his tech tree at all this game. No, he's very staggered. Yeah, he's very, he has 500 gas soon, but he doesn't have anything to do with it because he hasn't advanced his tech tree. He must have forgotten his cybernetic score. Yeah. Uh, With two cannons at home, I would actually say that those sellouts could just run past those bunkers as well, if he wants to. Definitely, now there are quite a lot of them. You're right, he it could just run range. by and completely oh, attack. I see that it's way too hard to engage on front. Yeah, not in the bunkers. But if the Celos would run, as you said, run out behind and then hit the base, that's another base trade scenario. And the cannons could defend yeah. him as well. I'm not sure he knows where the base is, though. That's a great point. <laughs> He's expanding to Septicus Natural now. Yeah. This is a wild game. This is a very well game. It's a quite the Artosis pylon in the main base as well. So this, if, if it gets sniped by a tank, then it's going to be lights out for the Protoss base. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh he, he, sne he snicked, he snickery a node, a uh, probery now outside the base here. He survived the bunkers. So now he's, he's, going to he's going to scout. And uh, he's going to scout south. I think that's good. I think he saw the buildings go there with his probe on the map. So now he's going to no. see... I see there's a bunker South. and some buildings, a few marines. Yeah, here's everything Septicu needs to win the game. He has one of every structure. Yeah, how do you counter one of everything? It's impossible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How do you counter everything? Yeah. This is interesting. So Septicu is now... Well, both of them are on two bases, but they are not on the standard positions on the map, so to say. And they're both amassing their first tier one unit. Okay, yeah, now, now we're seeing some it, more advanced stuff. Go ahead. He's even going for the cybercar on the other side of the map. I'm pretty sure that he has given up on his main. 
<laughs> That's very interesting. Uh, yeah, the, I, I hope he recalls the probes. He teleports the probes to his uh, base across the map because uh, they are going to start giving diminishing returns soon in this main. Yeah, it's only tr it's only six patches left uh, of minerals, so this yeah. those will actually mine out faster than you think. Yeah, definitely. And now we see the first first siege tank on the map, so he can outrange the uh, defensive cannons from the Terran here. Uh, yes. And we also see a fusion core, so perhaps we're going to see the uh, classic battle cruiser tactic again, because he has a tech lab starport right next to it. The trademarked septic battle cruiser harassment. Yes, let's just see if he gets 400 minerals and then starts one. Oh, we're seeing some more probes escaping the main, and they're perhaps looking to get a more another base. We're seeing more gateways, a little bit everywhere, and we don't have warp gate yet. No warp gate. Yeah, it's, it's obvious that uh, Hans got confused here uh, after the cannon rush. He wasn't sure what would happen next, if, yes. if someone actually survives. Definitely. He, he's, he's Protoss and cannon rushes, so he's used to his opponents just losing. So this is this is interesting. Yeah, this is definitely plan B here. Yeah, this is this is plan B. You're absolutely right. Now a Kronos gate tech. Um, but I don't think I don't think he is going to be able to handle this battle cruiser. He doesn't have warp well, gate. He has one stalker. I think this one battle cruiser is going to be able to clear out the north base, and that's going to be very hard to recover from. Yeah, but there is a stargate in production, so at least he's going the right tech. Yeah, but let's hope he doesn't make Phineas's like took still. Yeah, I really think he needs to avoid right now. This yeah. is going to be pretty tight here. There's not much room for mistakes now. Yeah. For Hans. There's a scan in the Protoss main. Maybe he's going to. Uh, Teleport there with his battle cruisers because he made the preemptive scan. Yep, there we go. I think Septica is actually confused where what he's doing because he has not seen the expansions to the bottom right. So he's wondering if this is everything. I think. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He hasn't seen the bottom right. Okay, the probes are evacuating to the third base, second base, and the Protoss units are also running by the bunkers. Uh, this should be a red warning for uh, Septicon that all the probes have somewhere to go. Definitely. Yeah. So, usually we see that players switch mains, but now instead we have both players starting at the bottom positions, so to say. We're having their mains there. Warpgate tech is ready, uh, so as soon as he has income again, he can start warping in stalkers to help against these double production battle cruisers. Yeah, this is a wild game. He you know he you know about the battle cruisers now as well. So yeah, he he can definitely start void ray production. Uh, void ray, as you said, is definitely the the best unit he can have. Look at Septica. He's asking if the he's asking if Hans is here. He's, he's probably still not realizing that he's actually still mining. Yeah, yeah, it, it's not over. Like dragging the game out unnecessarily is uh is not legal, so to say. But he's not doing that because he's because Hans still has mining. Yeah, both players are <laughs> agreeing that they are confused. <laughs> yeah, and the battle cruiser leaves the buildings alive in the main. It's only a single pylon, so you can Yamato can on that and then kill the rest of the buildings. So now plus one finishes on the upgrade, and he's even queued up plus one armor. This is an interesting game. Yeah, this is really coming down to the air defense, and there's not a lot of it of uh, for Hans here. No, he's not. It is not a lot of anything, really. Um, There's not a lot of ga gas being mined. I think that's the main reason. Oh, he's he scanned the bottom right base and uh, teleporting his bat is there. Yeah. And this is this probably is... this is gonna be real troublesome. Yeah, and this is gonna clear up a lot of confusion, I think, for Septica. Yeah. Yeah. So he's going to snipe the. Nexus here, there's uh, still the healing spam in the top right, and it's flourishing with probes, and there's still quite a few in the secondary base as well, but... But we need a gas though, we need a gas to counter the battle cruisers, there's only minerals being mined right now. Yeah, but he's gotten quite a few stalkers now, the stalkers can shoot up, so if you have enough, not enough of them, you can start countering the battle cruisers, or at least shooting at them. Yeah. But Sipuko mm. only sniped... Hens's Nexus and didn't go further because of the cannons. But he, he, he scans the next base, he sees all the stalkers. And the stalkers are on the hunt. He sees the stalkers moving out. 
So the start is a such fast units. They will probably reach his base before the battle cruisers can. Yeah, we see. Oh, they, 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 his army is splitting up. The zealots are going one way and the stalkers are going the other way. So this is not optimal. Um, yeah. And it's not good as well. If, if he tries to attack the battle cruisers, he wants to only take the battle cruisers, not the marines and tanks as well, because he can't handle those as well. He's That's a very good stalker count. Yeah, it's not enough stalkers to handle all of this. But he's able to make some harassment. He can snipe this third base. Uh, and there's still a lot of marines in the bunkers in the old Protoss natural. A lot of marines here. Fill the yeah. bunkers. But no medevacs. Definitely. Oh, so now the battle cruisers are here. Uh, he's inside the siege tank range as well as siege tank is... Oh, this is the game deciding moment, but it's like... Yeah, I don't think the Protoss is going to be, remake, be able to remake an army after this. And he, he, he doesn't get the battle cruiser. Ay ay ay. Damn, those battle cruisers are tanky. Yeah, they're a good unit in these... Uh, in these yeah, level of players. Two, a lot of stalkers at home. Oh, not a lot, but... Some at least. Yeah. And we have battle cruisers now. There's four battle cruisers and it's building two at a time. Yeah, two in production as well. Yeah, and now we see the the, the super scans everywhere for Seppuku to try and see exactly how it's going for hands. Two more Stargate is added, but not utilizing the first Stargate. No, and he's, he's not mining gas really at all either, so he's not going to be able to produce anything. Yeah, I think, I think it's almost that macro mistake here. If he had added uh, gas assimilators earlier, he would have had much easier to spend his money. Yeah. Now he's making three battle cruisers at a time. So he's soon going to be up to seven. And that's going to be uh, quite hard. There's going yeah, to be like one battle cruiser yeah. for every one or two stalkers. And this is a void ray must to kill almost at this point. Yeah, like maxed out Void Ray, or like not maxed out, but multiple Void Rays uh, is definitely necessary almost, and perhaps Storm even. Here's the tactical jump. Yeah, teleportation of the battle cruisers into the Protoss, or the old Terran main base. It's actually a, a, maybe unnecessary afraid of those stalkers, but maybe yeah. didn't see how long that trail of stalkers was. Yeah, and also some of the battle cruisers are quite injured. Uh, yeah. After the next wave of battle cruisers, he should be able to more offensively push him. And yeah, he the Terran player does not know yet about Hensa's top right base. No, this is actually risky to drag out this game too long because now the Void Rays are in production and yeah. those are the hard counters I would say to the battle cruisers. Yeah, and in the income advantage we see that it's actually an advantage to the Protoss player now. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, so as long as we see mo like more and more Void Rays being chronoed out, then there's still a comeback chance. Yeah, Nexus has all over the map. If... if uh... Septicus is playing the long, long game here, he's can, he can be in trouble. Definitely. And now he's chronoing out more Void Rays. Yeah, like, as long as uh, the armor supplies, so there's so many Marines as well. If he only pushed with his entire army with the Marines as well on the ground and the battle cruisers in the air, he should be able to clean it up. But if he only goes in with the battle cruisers and they get stuck because they teleport in and they can't teleport out because there's a long cooldown, then uh, there is still a chance, like, it's possible to throw this game, so to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially, especially because the income is so, is so close. Yeah. How are we on the upgrades? Are, are oh, we're we're having, having one upgrades? shield upgrade, or like one 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 on the ground for the, for the Protoss and nothing else for the... Oh, oh, it's a massive teleportation right on the army. Oh, that's Wh the jump. Hence realizes there's... Does he activate the Void Race? He has not activated the extra damage on the Void Race, and they're no, gone already. But yeah, that's... Now we activated it. Two more Void Race coming out. I don't think this will help to win the game. And now it seems like Septicus is realizing what a lead he has. 
Yeah, he, he, he scans to keep track of what's coming and he sees there's nothing there to defend. Yeah. But he's... is he moving home? No? He's undecisive. He's not sure if he has it or not. You should really get on top of those stargates. That, that's the only threat left in the game. Yeah. Probably not a big threat right now, but if yeah. there are a threat, that's it. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to uh, snipe the last of the uh, next side to get yeah. the buildings revealed and everything like that. Th that would be e equally good. Yeah. And it's not like a uh, last minute Dark Shine is going to do anything because there's missile turrets a little bit everywhere as well, so. Yeah, yeah. Seems like Sept Septicus seems like a really defensive player, so I think he has his own base in check. Yeah. All the Marines are still at home as well, so it's very... It's not kind of like a counter-attack where a base trade is going to happen. Oh. So now we see more snipes on the next side, and... Uh... Yeah. So the Battlecruiser strategy seems to be working out this uh, game so far. It didn't last match, but it almost did. So this is interesting. Do you think we're going to see more battle cruisers uh, next next game? Uh, yeah, definitely. It seems like uh, Septica has done it twice now, so at least on stream, maybe even one time more. So if, I think this is game plan pretty much to end the game with battle cruisers. Uh, either that, or if he's mixing it up in some way. Yeah. Now even the Marines are pulled, so I guess he's getting serious now about ending this game. It really should be his. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't even dare to look at the army supply. No. Think, yeah. <laughs> it would probably be pretty convincing. Yeah, but the income is still quite. It's not. It's the Protoss is in the lead. Yeah, but, but he has tr uh, three times the army supply though. So yeah. There's not much to stop this. Terran death bowling coming here. Yeah. We are alone clap in the background we're here. Um, chat, how does the video feed work? Does it look like good frame rate or does it is it quite choppy? What do you feel about the stream, chat? Wow. We have some super fan of Hens in the chat who still believes in the comeback. But the the game the match is not over, it's a best of three. So it's still a comeback potential. It's a bit choppy, yeah. Gonna have to yeah, yeah. Better. And since this game has been so chaotic, I guess it could take a little extra time for the pace to realize when they're fine and they are out. Because yes. uh, th this is not a normal StarCraft 2 game to say the least. Definitely. Definitely, and uh, it was interesting to see as well before uh, that we had a similar similar part of the game where the battle cruisers were killing out the main base and the, the Protoss was still alive and kept going for 15 minutes more, but um, I, I, it's looking not like it's not going to be that survivable yet anymore. I, I'm ready to call it. I'm definitely not seeing any convincing defenses anywhere on the map for uh, Hans. Yeah. But... Uh... As I said, I don't blame him to stay in the game a little longer, because maybe he's not sure exactly what's happening. Yeah. Let's see what he's looking at. He's, the Hens is focusing on getting up more Void Rays. Uh, we can see on this camera he's looking at his vo a new Void Ray production at 12 o'clock. Yeah. And, but uh, even if he did, there is so many Marines now, so now not Void Ray isn't the right choice either. Yeah. And uh, Seppuku has pushed Hens all the way across the map in the from the south to north on the east side and now he's going to close their circle by going and counterclockwise around the map again. Yeah. But you can't call Hans a quitter at least. No no no. And uh, it was uh, Starting to repeat around. Definitely. And it's also a bold strategy going with a cannon rush. Uh, and it it did quite well. He, as the Terran he could float away. But uh, do you think that will affect the next game, do you think it would? Do you think we'll see another cannon rush or another type of cheese? 
from the tape process player? Who? Uh, I, I, if, if I were Hans, I would actually go for another camera rush because I think he got a great position there somewhere, but uh, somehow he, uh, he missed the bunker on his expansion and from there he let the game slip away, but uh, other than that, I actually think he won the opening gambit. Yeah, he had a probe like around the Terran's third position, like in, around the middle of the map, and he saw this, the command center when it was floating. Do you remember that? And the probe didn't follow the command center, so he was able to get down and plant a, a new base in the bottom left. If the probe mm -hmm. would have just right-clicked on the command center as he was flo floating, he would have been able to see where it landed and then been able to continue the cannon rush. And as we said, continue his uh, cybernetics core tech tree. Yeah. Play is asking if the game is over, and uh, we can convincingly say that uh, it's uh, very much over. <laughs> but if you're new to the game, it's it's not 100% uh, obvious. GG! GG! So... Unfortunately, eliminated hands. No, 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 it's uh, just 1-0. Yeah, oh god, sorry, sorry, sorry. No problem, no problem. So we still have action, we still can see another cannon rush. I was this in is... best of one mode, I don't know why. So now we're asking for the place for the next map, because one thing that's very interesting about this tournament is that we're going with a loser's match pick system. So. When the, the player who loses gets to pick their map to make it a little bit more fair, so to say, so that a player who loses the first game can still come back if they have a very map-specific strategy. Yeah, the, with that said, it could it could be very good to prepare a special tactics for one map because uh, uh, if you, if you are going to be eliminated, you at least be sure that you got to play your special tactics on one map. Yeah, definitely. So I'm just asking for the players now to get the next map ready. So, yeah, very interesting start there. We saw we saw the um, cannon rush, and the Terran was able to survive, float away, and then go into battle cruisers. And then we it went on for quite a long while. Okay, so um, I would say cannon rush on remont uh, remont side is the play here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, he's gonna. Copy all the maps so they can choose. And it's also nice to see uh, some Protoss play because there's a, I, there are not a lot of Protosses in this tournament. So uh, the the Protoss fans in the chat needs to uh, really suck it in now and really clap for their Protosses if we don't have any student division alignments because uh, there's not many of them in the tournament. No, but with two Protoss in a group, we at least have a very high chance of having one of them advancing. Yeah, definitely. So, in the chat, what are your student divisions you're rooting for in the chat? We're looking at you now. Are you, uh, is there something that, is there a student division not playing today that you're thinking about? Or here for the, for one specific today? Ooh, I just realized how you change color in uh, the chat. Yeah. I must rep my uh, Electro Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we have the next map chosen, so I'm gonna start that. Spam this T to help IT. Yeah, that's good. Hmm. Hans is rocking the in control profile picture. 
showing his support to the legend himself. Yeah, but you, you do similar. You have a total biscuit, so... Uh... Yeah, never forget the... Yeah, rip, rip, rip spaghetti, never forget the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, <laughs> someone said cringe and <laughs> the mod timed in out. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty harsh. Yeah. Can I can rush that mod later today. <laughs> so, uh, let me see. Am I part of the conversation about the map pick? I'm not sure if I have any updates there. Okay, so I guess we're waiting for the players to pick maps and join the lobby. Yeah. Oh, we, are, we have a map selection, by the way. I'm invited to the lobby, so we're going to play on Oxide. Yes. Do you have any uh, opinions about Oxide? Hems pick on Oxide. Um, I'm not sure. It it, uh, it depends on what's uh, what's planned. Uh, for me, Oxide is. A uh, pretty, pretty vanilla map, if you so call it. call it. There's a lot of high grounds for tanks, but otherwise, I would say it's uh, pretty much uh, pretty much a standard map. It's it's hard to camera rush this map. But we'll... Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Let's go in game. However, if you do pull up the camera rush, then you can uh, probably lock your opponent into his main as well. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so in the bottom left corner, we have currently down 1-0. He needs your cheer. It's Hens. Wow, clap, 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 clap. Let's see some purple names in the chat. <laughs> purple. And in the top right corner, we have Septicu getting ready to fend off whatever is coming his way. From uh, automation and... Uh, yeah, what is it called? And mechatronics. Let's see here, let's get the score right there. Oh. And the first pylon is down. And it's a whoosh. It's a, it's a forge. It's a forge. We're going to see a repeat try here, which I think is the correct play. But do you see the SUV on the map? It's going a tricky direction here. Are we seeing a proxy second Rax? Or is he just scouting and not knowing where the entrance to the enemy base is? Uh, he's maybe looking to proxy gateways or anything. He's, he maybe has a sense that the shields is coming, I'm not sure. He was sending it over to his third first, which yeah. is a popular space to proxy buildings. Yeah, you're right. It could be a gateway uh, cheese that he was looking at. But the the uh, crouching probe hidden pylon has already planted themselves outside yeah. there and natural. Unfortunately, the probe is walled out. Yeah, you're right. He can't get up. I'm sure that Kano will not reach that ramp. Yeah, he needs high ground vision to be able to shoot, shoot at anything. But this he's going he's getting stopped in his track because it was such an early supply depot. Usually you don't get the supply depots this early and the probe can't slip up before. It was too <laughs> Not slow. this time. Not Sounds this so time good. in the chat. Ay ay ay. This is troublesome and he's, yeah, he's so far behind now. Immediately after seeing he cannot get up that high ground. He's even cancelling the cannon. Yeah. Yeah, he's completely thwarted, and he's trying to get his gases up now, and it's no probe production at all. Uh, this this is not looking good for the hand, Hens fans. Can we get some Bible Thump in the chat? Shit. But he's taking a risk, which I really like. I really like that he's taking a risk now, uh, planting the Nexus on his expansion, because he, need, he needs something to get back in this game, if he wants to have a honest chance. Definitely. I agree with taking the Nexus here. And we see there's some... Uh, random Terran buildings uh, on the map here as well. Yeah, I'm there's not sure what I think about these bunker the positions. Possible third base for hands. Yeah, but these bunk what do you think about these two bunkers? Uh, I think this is part of the confusion that happens when one plays this, because to, to, to me this uh, doesn't make any sense at all. So... This, yeah, this makes me think that 
Seppuku thinks that Hens' main base is up, up the ramp where he's building the bunkers. Because otherwise they're they're quite away. Oh, you're away. faking that. Yeah, maybe he's not that experienced on this map because he's like, oh, I'm going to put bunkers down on his naturals. But now he's well, putting bunkers. If nowhere. that's true, I really have it to the counter pick in map selection. Yeah. This is working out great. This is very interesting. And uh, we actually have the cyber done already, which is a few minutes earlier than last game for the Protoss. So that's very interesting. And it starts the warp gate tech immediately and Kronos it. So the Protoss is actually doing quite well for himself. And uh, yeah. Well, now now yeah. we see. Now we see this. Uh, I want to see his camera view. He, he, he takes his Marines, he goes up, and then he's like, oh, there's nothing here. Oh, yes. But, yeah, that's a time look to talk yeah. it off. When does he realize? He doesn't realize yet. He puts the marines in the bunkers. Oh no! Oh no! Now he realizes. Now he's like, oh no! Uh, this is total panic mode. This, uh, is, uh... this is full tilt, full meme, and he's supply blocked at the same time. Oh no! Now his SCVs goes in and he gets a hug by a stalker. Ay ay ay! Has he still going to need a camera? Oh, he in the chat. Yeah, that's a big way. <laughs> Oopsie doops. That's really big eye. That's totally letting hands into the game. And this I, and the Terran doesn't have his natural ready. So no. as long as Hens really macros up and really gets his economy online, he definitely he definitely can't win this. He definitely can win this. It's, it's such a big chance right now. How are we on the Steam and Combat Shields? Have, have, have we have started those? No, no, he hasn't started. He's floating a lot of minerals and gas, but he hasn't started and he's still supply blocked, waiting for the command center. So the, yeah. it's all falling apart from the Terran. Hashtag not like this. Wow. <laughs> the throws keep counter throwing each other, so now it's an even game again. Or the process <laughs> is even ahead. Yeah, this is this is actually hard to call, but I, I would say the process is way ahead now. Yeah. Double scan, realizing his massive mistake here. Yeah, and the scans are actually very expensive for those of you who don't know in the chat. So the Terran is spending a lot of money just scouting the opponent by doing the scans. Yeah, and that's money he doesn't have right now. He's behind in income. Yeah, Hard. he has no workers on his secondary base. And he's, he's taking the uh, what he thought was the Protoss main. And uh, that's an interesting strategy, quite close to the, to the Protoss main. Well, at least it will be hard to push with both of those bunkers. Yeah, definitely. The bunkers on the low ground is going to defend that position if it, uh, the protest doesn't go across the north or northern ramp. Oof. I'm not sure what to say here. I think Hans is progressing this game. Very good. Getting yeah. units, getting started on upgrades. Yeah, as long as... Even getting the tech with the Twilight and the Stargate. Yeah, he's preemptively making voyages because now he knows his opponent likes to build battlecruisers. So he's he's already thinking one step ahead. How can you battlecruisers rush if I already have voyages? It's so smart. Yeah, yeah, that's the right move to go here as well. And in the income tab, it's crushing uh, advantage for Hans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The longer this game goes, the more Hans it gets. It seems like. Yeah. As long as Seppuku doesn't get all his third bases up, but that looks like it's going to take quite a while. And hence, yeah. does the same strategy of a hidden base on the map. Wow. This is the best saved camera rush ever. Yeah, this hashtag saved in the chat. Like, this is very saved of a camera rush. Ay, ay, ay. And I, I also got, uh, got some information from the off-stream off -stream match. Idra from uh, the physics depart uh, physics division 2 0 his game against Tux from, from Software Engineering. So the winner of this match will meet Tux in the deciders match for the second place in the group. Ooh. So it's either going to be a rematch if Seppuku wins or it's going to be a brand new matchup if Hens moves forward. Oh, we yes. see uh, lots That's of more good. gateways. Idra is a smurf, I call it. Yeah, like. The real Idra is actually also studying physics, uh, so who knows? He, he maybe just did, did a big juke on us and fooled us. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually holding back his skills to release it in the finals. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Okay, so now we're seeing a more 
transition into passive play from both players. Both players are trying to macro up, get their bases up, buildings and production and so on. Who do you think does the first move out? Uh, I think um, the army supply is actually quite quite equal right now. So they, they both have about as big as armies. Yeah. But the income is massively hands. Yeah, and we're we're seeing little to I, no. I, would, I wouldn't say Septico moves out first. He tends to play extremely defensive, at least in the past games. Yeah. So I don't think he will make a move before he got the boat, the battle cruises up. Yeah. He's even going home with his marines. He's even more defensive than than attacking. It's ultra defensive. Definitely. Oh, we see some scans again. So now we're seeing some good scouting from the Terran player. He's identifying the, how the army looks. He sees the void race. Do you think he's going to still make battle cruisers? Because we, we still see the fusion core is now finishing up. I definitely think he's going for the battle cruisers either way. Yeah, and we... uh, it's it's not like it can't work if orders are out. So. It just means you have to be careful to not be caught. Yeah, definitely. Oh, a big push coming up to the ramp. Will he get the block? No, he's getting walled out. This is not a good engagement for Hans. No, he's losing all the void rays to the marines. And he didn't overcharge them. Ay ay ay. Did he just throw away his advantage? He certainly threw away his army, so... Uh... <laughs> But uh, I don't think Septicai will move out on this, oh. <laughs> because he's the battle cruiser kind of guy. He wants those battle cruisers before he makes a move. Yeah, wow. But it... uh, that was very expensive indeed. Yeah, wow. Press F to pay respect of Hans's army. But uh, Hans, Hans is getting the upgrades and Hans is still getting the units, so... Uh... Yeah. I'm a little bit afraid that the air support will be too low again, as now two battle cruisers are ready for the jump versus three void rays for anti air. Yeah. I'm trying to see the upgrades. Only There's two no upper cannon, so uh, at least the void rays got that going for them. Yeah, and we hope that when the fight happens, Hens activates the prismatic alignment on his void ray, the uh, extra damage. Activated ability because that yeah. makes a big difference against battle cruisers. Extra damage versus those armored units, he yeah. really needs that to pierce through on the battle cruisers. Yeah, we're seeing more and scans. Here's the technical jump. Yeah, he Somewhere. scanned ahead to see where he got it. Let's follow Hens' movement. He sees it, he's trying to. Uh... Oh, he now sees the bunkers as well, filled with marines. Uh, the, these battle cruisers are not gonna get the base, are they? Forward race, place your bets. Oh, 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 he's getting it. Oh, that was expensive. Three probes for a battle cruiser is not good. Absolutely not good. No. And when the prismatic alignment is activated on the void race, they get slower. But no, they can continue. There's nothing here. Oh, did he, did he see? Uh, yeah. Did he see him? He saw the refinery. Oh, he should know. Yeah, he's sending his army of cells against it. The bunkers are alive. What? Where? What the? What are the bunkers blocking? Oh, it's the third base, of course. That's why he built them there, and he did such a good job. And now they're gone. But those zealots are going to make work of that. Do you think the mass repair on the planet there will, will kill all zealots? Yes, but it won't <laughs> kill the void race. That's correct. Oh no, his fo oh, oh, void race are focusing back and forth. Oh, this is... Ex is, is oy, oy, oy. Ah, he's getting it. Hands this, in the chat. He's very hands right now. Yes. If it was banned before when he threw his army, it's really awesome right now. Oh, the SCVs retreated to the new hidden base, but the Protoss didn't follow. But now, yeah. And look at yeah. how much money the Protoss is floating, because he's too busy microing his giant army. So he has so much money left. Yeah. One thing to keep track of as well is that uh, the mules that Terran drops on his minerals are going to make him mine out faster as well. So. I think he really needs to get that third base up and defend it. Definitely. 
because his main is going to be dry very soon. It's happened way faster than you think. 60 minerals left on one patch, for example. Yeah. Hence is getting ready to macro because he's making six pylons, so he's getting ready to really spend those uh, supplies. Yeah, he's making space for the void race. Yes, the void race are actually race. quite supply intensive. Ooh. And he has four void race queued up on a single target, so he, he definitely feels like he needs more um, production. He's getting a fleet beacon. Is that for uh, void race speed or uh, carriers, maybe Tempest? Mm, either choice would be good, Narita, so As I'm confident in the choice. Yeah. He now has two armies here, the Protoss. So the, the Terran has been good with scouting because he's been scanning semi-regularly, but the Protoss has not done a lot of scouting. He just accidentally saw the base at uh, 9 o'clock. It's, the, it's their de ad adaptation from hands here. Blind countering the battle cruisers from, yeah. from game one. It's working out really good for him right now. I usually don't recommend the F2 army, but he should probably use that select all army out key so he doesn't have it void or separated though, because I, that's the only way I see closing to the four battle cruisers. Yeah, or, at, or if his void race runs into the marines, because the marines can shoot down the void race quite quickly. Yeah. But the marines, the marines are not the attacking units here. The marines are to, are for defending. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it would be pretty hard still to break Septi's front because you have four tanks and a bunch of marines. Oh. But there is a lot of cellos though, so... Oh, here the ward race comes. Oh, are they activating? Yep, they're activating their first medic yeah. Yeah, target firing as well. Oh, switching target a little early on the first battle cruiser. All the battle cruisers are going to get killed. Yeah, and they can't escape as well because the void rays have this um, following laser beam. Yeah. So you really can't escape them when they when they lock on you. Yeah. yeah, that was. I don't think that was a good trade for him. Uh, no, that's a reset on on. Um, on void rays. Oh no, battle cruisers. On Septus plans here. Yeah. Yeah, if he's going to just make a few bad cruises at a time and an attack and so on, uh, without expanding, he's going to run out of money very soon. Yeah, like the only thing keeping him alive is the hidden base up in the top top left corner. Yeah. Which may be discovered soon because there's yeah. a pylon warping in pretty close. He's already seen it, he scouted it with a probe and now he's making a pylon next to it. He's scouting the other know. side as well, so he's making sure that no more hidden shenanigans. Big play from Hans, securing it. Yeah, and Hans. Sure yeah. Hans spent all his money queuing up five void rays on four of his five targets. So he's yeah. now spending his bank. I think that's acceptable. As long as he gets those void rays out, he has this. He doesn't need to be optimal with the, with the queuing of the units now. Definitely. And he's warping in some cells to handle the northwestern base. There's no planetary there, so it's going to not be able to be defended. And that's going to push Seppuku down to uh, only two bases. Ooh. This is harsh. Now the, the total army move out. The Marines is coming as well. But I think there's too many Zealots. I think the Zealots should be able to handle it. Yeah. Especially without Medivax and... Yeah, and there's a lot of upgrades on the Proto side as well. He has charge and uh, everything. So I think it is... Quite a bit of Viking. Maybe can win the AOR. I'm not sure. Yeah, you're right. He's already activated his prismatic alignment now, so he's going to be on cooldown. And his cellots are yeah. a few of the cellots around. Oh, if he sends those cellots into the tanks, it's definitely not winning. Ay ay ay. Okay, now Hans needs to be a little bit careful. He, he totally has this game, but if he rushes right in now, he's going to lose. But if he waits a little bit, he has it. He needs to make sure he's not going preemptively here. He's the one mining. Sept is almost almost out. And he's still making four warriors at a time, so he's going to be maxed out soon for like the first time in this series. Uh, so um, at that point it's going to be hard for the Terran to win. Yeah. Sept is feeling the pressure now, moving out. Not something he usually wants to do. He wants to play really defensive. Yeah. So now let's see how the armies engage each other. Oh, those void rays are vulnerable if they get yeah, caught alone. They're passing each other. Oh, now they see each other. 
Can you jump on him before the siege? Ah, uh, the void rays are gonna get oh, there. too many void rays though. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. should take the air victory as well. Yeah. Fatty cruisers are teleporting in, but that's probably not gonna be enough. Yeah, everything is getting slaughtered here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh oh, oh, that's an understatement. And now there is not much to defend at home. Uh, there is um, four marines, a tank, and some missile turrets. Yes, clearly not enough. Yeah. So this is the first out of all five ma no four matches so far, including this. This is going to be the first match that goes to the third game. Yes, and Hans is really feeling feeling the blood here. He's moving in immediately after that victory. Yeah, which is very good. Yeah. Yeah. Killing him off right now when he has the time for it. Or like the opportunity. So, we have seen two cannon rushes in this match so far. Will we see a cannon rush in the last game? Ooh, I don't know. The cannon rush results for this game was uh, actually really bad, I would say. But uh, I think because of the bad knowledge of the map hole that the Septics uh, displayed. I think Hans got away back in this game, but the cannon rush was definitely not the winning factor here. Definitely. But now it's uh, Septic's time to pick map, so he, at least he won't get caught like that again. Yeah. Clap, clap, clap in the chat. Okay, so let's see what map they choose. Is the clap audible enough, chat, or is it too loud, too low? What do you feel? Improvise, adapt, overcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, the cannon rush save there was... That was interesting. He lost the game where the cannon rush quote-unquote worked, and then he won the game where the cannon rush like, yeah. it goes completely it limited. Was, it was a re, re, it, it looked really bad there for a second. Yeah. I've turned up the clap bot now, so it should be a little louder. Oh, what's happening now? Let's see. Seppaku went offline. Maybe you think he got eliminated? I don't know. We see restarting the game. Someone in the chat says that Septic has technical problems. Of course, I don't know he, how he knows that, by the way. I am Septic, okay. <laughs> then you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Zacharias and Sagos are uh, in the chat here. Sagos is uh, another player from. Um, uh, Mechatronics, who is going to play on, uh, I think, Saturday. So th those two have probably um, practiced quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Are we having any team kills in any of the groups? I haven't checked. Uh, yes, there is There is two uh, software engineering on um, Saturday. Oof. Okay, so we have the next map cho chosen, chosen, and it's going to be, for the first time in this tournament, it's going to be Romanticide. I think it's a pretty map, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I like the I like the look of the map. I don't like losing on it though, so <laughs> for me it's weird though, but... Uh, yeah, but I think, I think it's pretty okay. It's a little bit different. It's definitely not your standard map, I would say. Yeah. But... Um, for defensive play, I can definitely see why Romanticide, because there's not so many pathways into your third base. You would have to go around almost the whole map to get to the second entry. Yeah. So uh, it actually makes a lot of sense uh, when uh, Septico is picking it. Yeah. So let's see, you get everyone in the game here. Uh... Septico. So, would Septico, would Hans, 
Can I rush? Yes or no? I I I, I don't know. It, it worked so well not last time not doing it. Yeah. Uh, so let's see if both players are ready before starting. If he does, he actually can rush all all games in a best of three, I think. Yeah. That's yeah. a really baller move. That's a little bit uh, like uh, what's he called? Like. Uh, Oh, I can't remember the name. Protoss player, real boss, boss man. Or oh, MC? No, 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 it's one of the newer guys. Oh, uh, that uh, can I rush? Or do you mean um, uh, Has or SOS? No, I'm blanking. It's. it's uh, it has a build named after him when you proxy your first gateway. Oh, yeah, room. Max Pax, the Max Pax. Max Pax, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Max Pax, the Danish Protoss. Yeah, Danish Protoss. He's. Uh, very, uh, he, he definitely made a name for himself. Kind of sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we are now loading in in the bottom left corner of the similar colored as his armies. We have hands. Bam, 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 bam. And wow, in clap the in chat. Left corner, we have Septicu, the most defensive Terran on the ladder. Yeah. Hey. Let's see if the battle cruisers or cannon rush strategies are changed for this game. Mm -hmm. oh, we have a probe moving out here. Yes, it's a bit of a later pull dog, pull dog than it was in the other games, I think at least. We had enough claps there to reach a higher level of, of uh, cheers, so that's great. We can definitely hear the clap pot is working and we see the excitement in the chat. Oh, okay. this probe is up no good. Oi, oi, oi. Okay, chat, do you, what do you say? Can rush, fail or succeed? Well, the adaption from uh, Septic uh, is still there. He's full walling. Oh no! Early. He hasn't built a forge. Is it a fake can rush? I don't know. There's still a full wall from Septicus. I don't see this doing much. It isn't a fail. He's making a forge after the gateway. There it is. Ah, okay. But yeah, as you said, the full wall of fear is going to prevent high ground vision, so even if there's cannons on the low grounds, they can't shoot up. Aye, yeah, aye, this, aye. Uh, this is something really advanced to work out. Maybe like a shield battery immortal push here from the low ground or something like that. Yeah, or shield battery voyager as well, but I'm not sure if these players um, know those strategies, so to say. Uh, but I hey, so. Hens won last game even after a, not a cannon rush, so we'll see what happens this time. The yes, probe, yeah. this is some Septicus map pick, so uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the probe hasn't uh, done anything. Yeah, he haven't committed any cash to the cannon rush yet either, so there's no cannons down, there's just one pylon that's fully acceptable to lose. So yeah. maybe it actually is a fake because he didn't proceed and he didn't scout, so I, I'm not sure. Maybe he was hoping that Septic would send down an SCV to look for the cannon rush and then pull workers. Uh, bunker on the Nexus position, blocking the expansion. Aye, aye, aye. Annoying, um, but I'm not sure the Marines will be there in time. I think it's just Especially going to be... scouted as well. Yeah, the probe sees the Marines moving forward. Uh, they might actually get in the bunker, which is interesting. Usually the bunker is just there to block the Nexus, but there's actually going to be Marines getting in there yeah. because there was no deny on the SUV building it. This is the extra bit of annoying. When it's not engineering bay block, it's the actual bunker threat block. Yeah, and the Celot sees there's even a barracks being built at the uh, edge of his natural, so there's uh, mm -hmm. going to be real troublesome here. <laughs> wow, yeah. Our boy is gangsta until the caster says, ay, 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 yeah, that's right. Okay, Marines in the bunker, this is getting troublesome, and the Terran is very importantly getting his natural base up, which means that he's going to not be completely all in and actually be able to transition out of this contain. Yeah, so far this is looking good for Septico. And it's also interesting to see how there's been so many players today prioritizing shield upgrades. I wonder if that's just because he knows he's going to get air probably against the battle cruisers, or if he just likes it for his ground units as well. I'm not sure why. Yeah. And we but, also uh, have supply block for the Protoss here and more marines coming up, so there's going to be two bunkers soon. I, it's going to be uh, 
it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Oh, the, uh, the barracks blocking the logo. I, what does Lucky Luke think about that? Okay. And this is an interesting contain here. Yeah, it's a very hard to break contain right now. Yeah. And in cannons, there will still be the option to run past the contain. Ah, uh, Hens is doing a similar strategy like the first game, building defensive cannons in his main base. I, I, I don't like this. To be honest, I don't like it. Well, if, if you move past the contain, there is uh, not much to defend at home for Septico. That's right. I mean, but I mean make, for Star But making these defensive cannons that Hens does in his main, it's, the, the Terran is never going to attack his main like this, so these are just wasted minerals. Unless he moves out. He really has to move out to make this work. Yeah, like he basically needs a War Prism and then just go and attack the other main base because he yeah. definitely needed his, his natural a long time ago. He's still a supply blocked, so the, the gateways are not getting warped into warp gates because he's, he has units there stuck. I'm actually a little bit surprised to see so much adaption from like both of these players in, in the games. It, it really did matter that it was the best of three, because Definitely. they changed up their builds to counter each other. Definitely they did. Okay, so the cells got wasted, uh, and there's more bunkers being built here. And they're, they're queuing up of lots of units here. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is troublesome. Is this the, the beginning of the end? I don't know. They are a decorative cannon. The casters has no sense of aesthetics. Yeah, <laughs> mate, I'm sorry. Shit, you gotta get at the ramp. Yeah, look, it looks like we, you know when you play the campaign, there's like oh a pylon and a gateway and a cannon a little bit randomly placed. You know. Oh, Septic is really feeling it. This game He's even taking his third base. Yeah. Almost overkill at this point. Point. Yeah, and we're seeing both a Twilight and a Stargate in the main base of Hens here. Um, do you think Dark Shrine or Blink Stalkers or what do you feel? Maybe more an Oracle as a to see what maybe can save Hens now because it's looking kind of dark. I think it's maybe one Oracle because those guys can kill SCVs fast, or maybe Dark Shrine because you know when behind Dark Shrine it can always work. Yeah. If he, if he catches uh, Septico without scans, he can, clear, he can even clear out his... Uh, maybe not his front, because there's a missile turret now, but uh, yeah. on the other side of the map, those duties could wreak havoc. Mm. Uh, we're seeing charge, so he's going into the Cellot Void Raid army composition we saw last game. Um, yeah, this is unfortunately not the winning move right now. No, because compared to last game, he was in uh, an advantageous in composition, now he's in a disadvantage in composition, so we yeah, need to have a smaller the army. The income behind this army is too, too small. Yeah, if we look in the income graph, we can see that the the uh, advantage is definitely in Sepulchre's position, so his army is going to outgrow. Oh, we have a siege tank here. Finally, a real siege. He scans ahead and sees all the decorative cannons. They're going to be soon decorative garbage cans, because they're going to get blown. Up to well, the cannons do get one kill there. <laughs> Did it? Was it the cannon? <laughs> oh, two the cannon kills? has two kills. Yeah, stealing the kills from the stalkers would have gotten them otherwise. Okay. I would say the cannon is actually carrying his back to victory right now. <laughs> to victory? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to be honest. Oh, maybe a preemptive move out could lose in the game. Uh, he's getting both of the cannons. This is on army hands. Definitely should have jumped on. Yeah. This is not a now friendly. he looks like. He already has charge now, so he could definitely have gotten the tank. Uh, and this, this could sniping. maybe clear out the bunkers even. That's the a lot race. of Void Rays need to help. Yeah, going for the siege oh, tank. He, 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 can he, he's pulling back. Yeah, honestly, maybe he needed to. And he's very sure. indecisive, and the Void Rays are not... I, I don't know. I, I, I. Meanwhile, we see third base on location from the Terran, and I, I'm not a fan of this barracks placement. If you look if in you the Terran natural, uh, even the tech lab is... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, that's almost like a StarCraft 1 barracks that your opponent built. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
hates the lead strats. But you gotta get that combat uh, steam ready. Yep. No time to lift. Yep, and he's queuing it behind Concussor, but that's fine. Okay, we're seeing Tempest. Do you think Hens can micro his Tempest such amazingly that he can break this container? No, I don't think so. You don't think? You don't, uh, you don't have hope? I don't have faith in the Tempest no. micro here. No. Oh, he's from the, the move out. Like, something like this he should have done a long time ago, because this is at least causing confusion. <laughs> yeah, confusion is a very powerful tool uh, in these games. Yeah, see, actually, Septic is chasing him over the map, which is 100% the wrong move. Yeah. He should just go for his main here. So, so, like, this is the kind of power move that can maybe make a comeback. There's not a single army unit, not a single army unit in the rotor space. Now the break havoc on the stationary defenses on his natural. Great multitasking, actually, from Hass here. Now we see the Marines, and uh, I... I I would have wanted maybe a uh, recall on the Void Race, or at least a repeat. Oh no, no! The Marines are just walking into the yeah, no, we have, we have the bunkers, the what? Marines are not... Is this the, the comeback? Bunk. Is this the comeback real? Oh my god. Hence, hence fans I feel a little chat. bit skinny now, because I thought this was 100% over. What? Oh no, he's losing the Void Race to static defenses. Oh no, he's... Yeah, oh, oi. This is <laughs> the last army as well, because he's basically mined out. Oh so no, he's... Why is he going now? What? Oh, he's not even expecting a third base. No, but he's not even poking in the main. Yeah, he could go for the main as well. Like, just poking, just going in and see are there units in the main? Is there a tank or not? Because there's, yeah. what, two it's SEVs? It's and... clearly some inexperience shown here, but... Uh, I would say his position is better now than it was. However, the momentum is slowing down considerably. Yeah, now now he's moving in with Seppuku is moving in with two marines to scout to see what the defensive capabilities are, and it's just three zealots. Yeah, like the marines have nothing those on, on those zealots. Like the zealots really will go hammer on on the marines without steam and medevacs and support. Yeah, steam just finishes up, so it's perhaps possible that the the eleven marines or twelve marines now could push in before the tempest is down. We'll see. We have a hidden probe on the map, escaping. This is, this this is, is interesting. the last money he's saving up to build an expansion. This will be the last 400 minerals. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he's going to have to recall his probes and get some real uh, money income down here. Oh, I like this map. Yeah, yeah he maybe has like total free nexuses left in his mineral line. So I'm pretty glad he actually put down a nexus right now. Yeah, and I'm still interested by this contingency of units standing outside the Terra Natural. Yeah, I think his attention is elsewhere simply. He's, he's trying to get his economy up now with the hidden nexus. Yeah. They're actually getting some rallied marines though, so it's not hurting him. Yeah. Oh, will he see the third base? If he would, it would be very... Three oh, battle cruisers waiting for him though. Yeah. I think an insta recall will be, have to be ready here. Yeah. He, he, like, he needs to save these two tempers. They are very, very valuable now. Yamato is going off. As well. oh, oh, he needs to retreat that one. He needs to retreat the damaged Tempest. Oh no, oh, and it's gone. Oh, but he's getting a well, Battle Cruiser. Battle Cruiser for it. No, he doesn't get it. He doesn't finish There's it. two very wounded Battle Cruisers there. Oh, he forgot the Battle Cruisers. I would almost be okay with the trade if he wasn't so behind economically. Yeah, a Tempest for a Battle Cruiser is, uh, even in this position, is fine. But now we lost it for nothing. Yeah, it's like maybe okay, but without even getting the better cruiser, it's really hurtful. Yeah, but he's, he's now decided hard for the um, Tempest production. So let's see. Still getting the rally marines though. Yeah, there I is wonder. Some that definitely need to check it rally point. Yeah, he's re he's still rallying towards the uh, Protoss Natural. Oh, teleport into the main. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 and his his Tempests are he's put going back with the Tempest. Recall the probes, maybe? I don't know. Uh, he's going to go past the bunkers. I wouldn't even dare to recall his probes right now, because that should show that you have another Nexus. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But now he's going to notice. Seppuku will know that there's a hidden Nexus on the map, because the automatic reveal function will not trigger, which would have triggered if there was no Very base true. structures. Very so true. he should know now. So now, yeah, he's starting to scan. He even scans the probes. 
Five tempest, no. Five tempest, yeah, but five tempest versus oh, six yeah, tempest yeah. versus three battle cruisers. I can't imagine upgrades for tempest. Yeah, you can see at the bottom here it's one one one. So uh, wow, this is still quite a game. You should really like Amo his tempest to his natural, but just to keep the pressure up. Here and here is the Amo's coming as. He needs to micro. Oh, 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 he didn't need to micro. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, the damage towards uh, structures upgrade. I don't think he has it, no. No. But yeah, he's gonna clean up his natural, and he still has sort of a mining base. No gas, though. So, let's see what happens. In the income tab, uh, the entire game has been a clear income lead by the Terran. Yeah, seeing it is but right. I'm honestly surprised that uh, he's still in this. Kinda. Hence is kinda in this. He was very, very dead a while, a while ago. Yeah, but like w at the time where there were three battle cruisers and six tempests, that's a lead by the tempest, so maybe could have done something. We're now yeah. seeing mass scans to find the final nexus, but he has not scouted the right one. I would say both both players have definitely have the opportunity to end this game. Yeah, but that's why it's so good when it's an evenly matched players. It, it, even though they're not top skill, as long as they're evenly matched, the, the throws are equally in, in both sides, so to say. Yeah, 50 versus 15 harvesters. Yeah, that's uh, that's, that's a very probably, uh, will be the that's probably the killing blow. No gas income whatsoever. Yeah, but in the um, in the armor production, we're still seeing only battle cruisers versus only tempest, and that's good for the tempest. Mm. But as you say, if without any income, the production of tempest is going to stop very soon. Oh, and here's the tactical jump. Uh, where's the tactical jump? It's coming to the bottom left. Oh, he's, he's, he's found the base, and he he has 400 minerals and an already starting natural, so he's going to be able to survive it. He only has five probes. I think this is going to. Um, Definitely, like it has to make Hens start to aggressively attack. Every second that goes by, he's now so far behind in the income. Yeah, there's actually a lonely battle cruiser in the main as well. I wonder if it teleported there. Yes, it did. Yeah, quite recently, so he can't teleport away. So the, the tempests yeah. are on their way there. Well, he gets the fleet beacon for it, so... Oh, oh yeah, that's quite important, actually. That's a, a fleet beacon costs as much as a Tempest, so that's not free. Oh, yeah, we do not have cash for Tempest right now. Nope. And um, the Terran... Oh, he, he almost one-shots the that user. Uh, the Terran does not know about any of the uh, base positions of the Protoss. Uh, but I'm not sure if he needs to, because it's more of the Protoss side to start attacking. It's like Hen's army could absolutely kill uh, Septicus armies pretty easily, actually. So he has that going for him. If, if he has commenced with an attack right now, this Tempest says will win over this battle cruises and Marines. Yeah, like the, he's on his way there now. So, as you say, maybe he can start snipe the army and start killing the Micro is decent here, this should be an easy victory. But Septicus is keeping the pressure on him and that's what's making him constantly having to pull back his uh, units. Oh, te Septicus teleported his entire Battle army right when the Tempest arrived, so now it's a complete base trade. Who does this is favor? Obviously not good for... Um, for uh, Hems. I would say the Battle is are way more mobile and we keep uh, stuff on the ground way faster. Yeah, we're seeing the probes escape. Yeah, this is... But it really comes down to the players in a base trade scenario as well, because it can be really hard to make the split se second decision calls on what to do here. Yeah, and we're seeing tons of missile turrets going up to try and slow down the Tempest. Oh, look at the 12 o'clock, the, the workers are beefing it out. Yeah, but the battle cruiser is showing up now, and the planetary fortress is being morphing, so these probes has to get out of there. Are these all the probes? No, there's one probe. He's splitting his battle cruisers to every possible base. Yeah, that's smart to find the next eye, but... Uh, 
Hence doesn't have any more money. He only has one probe and no more money. So now we're getting into a real elimination game. He will actually, he will actually die by a real base trade. Every building will die here. That's the, that's the plan, I think. Yeah, and yeah, the battle cruisers. Every be a return home. Yeah, the tempests are too slow to kill the buildings, and the battle cruisers have found the last nexi, nexus. So as long as the nexus die, then it's going to be automatic reveal of the last buildings, and then it's going to be automatic death. I no probes anymore. No cash either, so... Yeah. So... If we're what about it? Did come home? Oh, 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 we're seeing spells being cost. This is only possible losing move, I think. Yeah, only possible losing move, yeah. If he loses <laughs> all the battle cruisers. It's not really losing, but maybe it could be. Oh, the, the no focus fire, so the damage is being split up. And he's making a missile turrets beneath the Tempest. Ah, there. <laughs> no <laughs> showing a bitch. Someday this will help out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it actually will help out before the fight is over. No, I won't. But oh, oh yeah, no, you're right. The missile turrets will finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually get shots off. Wow. It's the game winning move. Game winning move. Yeah, it's it's gonna be the game. What? You see that? The, it would be like only one battle oh, left. My oh my yes. god, what a play! Wow. What no, a play. No, it's not just GG, it's GG, super GG. Yeah, GG, GG. That was actually a good game. And like yeah. a good finish. It really was. But it's hard to base trade again against that kind of mobility. Yeah, definitely. But uh, that was a very good show by um, uh, Hens, who is now yeah. the first player to get eliminated out of the tournament. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. But Ooh, that, that means we get one more game today, right? Yeah, because we're going to have the final game. Anything. And it's going to be a rematch between Seppuku and um, Tux. Ooh. <laughs> so uh, let's take a short three minute break while uh, we get the final game ready for you. Okay. So let's see. Är vi mötade?
Okay, we are back. We are getting the players ready for the next game. So the map is going to be Light Shade again. So it's a, a famous map now. So almost, it's been played quite a few times. And we are ready. So the map is now loading. Good luck, have fun. And it's going to be the final match for today. This is how the games have looked so far. EG Idra moved on as the first place finish of this group. And we saw Hens, Hens getting eliminated just now. So we're moving on to the final match of today. How do you feel, Jock, about today's matches so far? Jock? Okay. Well, let's uh, start the game. In the top left corner of Lightshade, we have Tux from Software Engineering. Clap in the chat, clap, 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 clap. And in the bottom right corner of Lightshade, representing Mechatronics, it's the rematch. The best security maker himself, it is Seppuku. Wow. Hello. And you're in the game now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are in the game. Oh, damn. I was trying to get your attention. Uh, and now it's really everything on stake, because now it's go home or go go forward in the in the eliminations. Definitely. Right. Like, there's a reason it's called the decider match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's going to be very interesting to see, are we still going to see battle cruisers? And will we see a hard counter opening to battle cruisers? In that I'm, case? I'm actually wondering if Tux has been keeping up with the stream, because if he have, I think he will choose to go Void Race instead as the counter, if versus the battle cruisers. Yeah, last game he went, um, well, I, we, before when he saw him, he went like Disruptors and Immortal and stuff, and they're not that good against battle cruisers. So we'll see. And later he went for uh, the Phoenixes. Yeah, and that wasn't either. But he started with the Tempest in the end, so he probably uh, has a good grasp of how to handle it this time. We'll see. Yeah, the Tempests are great. They're almost as fast, but has like four times the range, it feels like. Yeah. So we uh, like the banter in the chat. We'll see if there's... Oh, Bunker on the position. Classic yeah, it's movie. a free it's a free rex on Septicus. This is a move for oh. aggression, not usually something uh, Septicus is doing. Definitely, he's, de he's definitely changing up his play. It's going to be interesting. We don't see yeah. that heavy marine production yet. This has one barracks idle. Perhaps he's micro in the chat more than macro in his buildings. Yeah, now, now the, meta, the meta game here is to really micro the chat to get see oh. hold up. No. <laughs> it's really hard to do his opponent oh. as much as possible for this free rex to be acceptable. Oh. And now the marine shows up and it can't jump in the bunker. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. This is not the kind of start you want to see in a best of three. Well, all, all the barracks were at home and... Uh, no cancel on the bunker. No cancel, unfortunately. That did hurt, but at least he got all his barracks not proxy, so he's, he's yeah, much he less in much less all-in because of that. Yeah, as long as he keeps producing stuff, he can still transition into quite a heavy push later. Like, if he starts steam now, then by the time that and common chill is done, three Raxes produces a lot of units. But uh, we'll see what he does. He's trying to save up for a natural, it, it looks like. Yeah. If he gets the natural down pretty quick, I would say it could almost be a good position because at least when I play Terran versus Protoss, I, I always see it as a win if I could slow the game down because that means I'm a little bit closer to Steam and Combat Shield while the Protoss really haven't achieved as much. Definitely. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting. going out, looking for a proxy. That's not proxy. Yeah. Lamau. So, um, both are trying to transition into more of a macro game. And we see Seppuku, is, his macro is slit, slipping up very heavily now. It's not very good. He's not building any workers from his main base. So he's going to mm -hmm. fall behind in the economy quite heavily. Yeah, I really hope he's not giving up on this match because he's very much in it. Yeah, definitely. 
even though the bunker bunker rush was uh, it looked atrocious but since all these spares were at home it's not it's not actually that serious yeah double forge coming in from uh Dukes. yeah so we're going to see heavy upgrades really putting the pressure on septic to do something yeah a slow warping pylon at the natural not perfect placements but that's uh, that's how it goes Okay, we have a marine move out. How many are those? 13 marines. And uh, let's see uh, if they can get anything done. We this scan. should be alerted by the Protoss player if the Mancre is correct. But especially if he gets them on the high ground here. Yeah. So cor correct move from Septicu to move home. This could actually have turned pretty ugly because if he's lost that fight, the, the Starkers will chase him back over the map as well. So there will be no survivors. Yeah. We're seeing double, double bunker in the natural. Yes, that's very safe. Almost a little bit excessive. He's facing the double forge, which you don't know, but uh, this is really took putting pressure on uh, Septico right now. Yeah, and we can see the uh, lack of worker production really hitting Septico. Tuxis has, has a larger income lead right now. And the, all the scans is costing him a lot of money as well. Each of those scans we see costs him a lot of money. And, oh, is oh, that a full wall-off? The DTs are sneaking oh. in. It's not Don't a full wall-off. He sees them, he's, he res... Oh, no. Uh, oh. Raise the depot to the main, uh, float the CC, and nothing, anything? No! Anything, anything right now. He does have a scan. Wow, oh, ay ay ay. F in the chat to all the SCVs. Ay yes. ay ay. I'm eventually getting even worse here. Oh no, he's wasting his only scan! Yeah, he this... scans long before his marines are there. Oh, this is game ending. Uh, yeah, this. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty, pretty soon he will have another scan. It's just a few seconds yeah, the, away. The, ter the turret will be done, but he has lost so much. Yeah, those were hardcore DTs right there. Yeah. This is a big. Big trouble right now. Ay 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 in the chat. <laughs> ay ay ay. And he's still very poor uh, worker production and no orbital command on the natural. A yeah. lot of DTs out on the map now. More DTs, it's yeah. Like more than 1000 scans to move over this map now. He's getting the DT blink upgrade, so he's going to be able to teleport his uh, Dark Templar soon. For yeah, those of you who don't know, these Dark Templars are completely invisible and they one-shot a lot of stuff, so the Terran has to use these expensive scans or defensive missile turrets to get vision of the invisible units. So that's why it has these missile turrets a little bit everywhere now. Steam is finishing up, but there is no medevacs in sight yet. A lot of gateways added from Tux. This is looking really great for Tux right now. He's really got his macron point this game. Yeah, spending your money is the... Getting money and spending money is the two most important part of playing an RTS. So it's very important that it gets all this production up. And it even gets a third base. So Tux is going to be very far ahead. Spankers will grab so fast versus to those duties. Even though I don't I don't commend this kind of aggression, but... He's so far ahead. I uh, see the bunker burns down, no. Oh, oh! 5 <laughs> HP. Oi. Wow, there, it's a, such a love drama. This is quite a highlight. <laughs> there is as much typing as there is playing. Oh no, he stopped repairing the bunker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 50, 10, 5. He, he stopped because he needed to type out another insult. Yeah, the insult the game is on point, but I... Oh, <laughs> and he builds another one. To the main. What is it? Six six SVs in the natural. Yeah. This is pretty dead, actually. Sorry to say. Yeah, he's going to... Yeah. With the, the way Tux is backing also, this is going to be extremely hard, if not impossible. Yeah, well, let's see how uh, Tux tries to uh, handle it. Do you think we're going to see a lot of blink DTs go in, snipe the missile turrets? There's still no orbital command on the second base. Or blink into the main? Does he have high ground vision? No. They do not have high ground vision. I think it's totally acceptable to wait as well for Tyron to make the next move. I mean, yeah. what he can expect a push or, a, or attempt to expand here. Yeah. Uh, 
and I think he should be able to to crush both. If he blinks in, I think he'll lose all DTs instantly. Because yeah, yeah, they yeah. have very little health, these invisible units, so... Yeah, I can oh. see those just get, get so in, maybe. First, the entire army, and then he blinks in. Oh, I'm blinking. Oh, shredding. Wait, did you see those marines? Did he skim <laughs> them, like, in... What, what marines? I, th yeah, and, I and think... And he's doing a slash dance on one bit. Yeah, 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 and then he hallucinated the, uh, Colossus. I yeah. think he uh, hold down the, held down the steam button, so all these marines went to 5 HP. Uh, aye, 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 in the chat. <laughs> uh, it actually yeah. doesn't matter, because the DT's one hits the marines anyway. Yeah, because they didn't have combat shield. Yeah. Uh, yep. Slash the hands, Lama. Uh, well, this is not looking good. So, how do we oh, yeah, summarize yeah. this game? Seppuku tried to make a three barracks offensive opener and the bunker didn't finish and he got completely thwarted and then he never made SVs. Uh, I actually think he got up, uh, caught up in the chat game. It felt like he, he um, almost gave up on this game too early. Yeah. To, to me it looked like he lost focus after the mistrust attempt when yeah. in reality he wasn't that far behind. No, definitely not at all. The only thing he left lost was the 100 million nodes for the bunker, but he still could have got them, like gone back there, come back, yeah. came back. So, it was uh, not like that. They were slamming our early nexus directly after. So the game wasn't really over until after the uh, the first blink, uh, the first DTs. That was real trouble. Yeah. That was pretty little, <laughs> and took still a very great job uh, macroing this game. Yeah, it's uh, the real uh, real news here. GG! Wow, what a game! Mm -mm -mm. Game number one. Game number one! Clap, clap, clap. A lone clap in the chat. There we go. Wow. Steam <laughs> addiction feels bad, man. See the workers. Uh, maybe, maybe it was a little bit more behind than we thought. They probably cut some workers to make those barracks as well. It was like three or four workers behind at least. Yeah. So let's see now. Uh, we're waiting for the players to Seppuku to choose the next map. He's, he shows pillars of gold. Do you think that is a good uh, cheese map? It's interesting that he's showing another counter pick than he did last time. Yes. Uh, I think. Uh, or oh, did it? Uh, where am I wrong? I'm not sure. I I'm didn't. Do I you think mean... he picked Oxide last time. Yeah. But I might be wrong. No, or wasn't that in uh, Hens versus Sevoku? But yeah, it would be the same matchup, so yeah. No, yeah. you're right. I think. Uh... I think P Pillar of Gold is uh, can be a pretty good uh, terror map. Uh, like there is the the problem with taking the fire on this map. I think it's very open, even uh, even if you take it on the low ground or if you take it more forward or on the high ground, it's still pretty open. So you gotta you gotta need something to get those cellots, especially if they got legs closing in on you. Yeah. No, it's gonna be very interesting to see. Um... Seppuku has tried to have the bunker in the natural of the enemy Protoss, even when it's not having a bunk or like a heavy barracks pressure. So let's see if it does it anyways. But um, we'll see if it changes anything. It's actually high level, high level meta, maybe out meta <laughs> myself yeah. here. But if we went for the bunker, but with no intention to actually put marines in, it, just to delay the expansion a bit. Yeah, usually you do that, but with an engineering base, because it uh, has more health and you can make it earlier. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Spawning in the bottom left of Pillars of Gold, we have Software Engineering's up 1-0. It's Tux. Wow. Clap, clap. Wow. And in the top right, we have Septico from Mechatronics and Automation in the dark gray color. Yay. Wow. What a nice student division colors they have. Fully represented yes. in the game. Uh, let's get the scores. Pretty early scout here, I think, at least. Definitely. Uh, will we see a cal- it's a- oh, it's a forge. Shh, it's a forge. 
Yeah, I got I got the suspicion that this was something shady. Do you think he'll be able to get in the main before there's a full wall off? Because we saw that the last Protoss who tried to can rush failed. Yeah, I don't think oh, no, Septicus. Who's uh, uh, Septicus? have learned his lesson versus Protoss. He's going for that second before immediately. Well, he's definitely not going to go for it now, I think. No. <laughs> he's, he's asking him to, to, to lower the depot so he can come in. And meanwhile, there's nothing back at home from Tux. There's no... There's no Nexus or even a gateway, so... He's still going for the pylon. He's really going to try to brute force his cameras. This yeah. is like next level brute forcing. He's even he's starting the first pylon when the first barrack is finished. Yeah, this is yeah, this is a uh, distraction at most. I can't see this actually doing a lot of damage. <laughs> and there's some mind games in the chat trying to yeah. lure yeah. him in with a ring. Yeah, exactly when the marine is propping up. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like these cannons. Uh, if he just cancels these, it's not that big of an investment and he can start to focus on his own natural expansion, but... Uh, it's going ring around Rosie here. A factory needs to come down here from Septicu to ultimately crush this. Because I still think he's going to need a siege tank to break this low ground. Maybe. The vision problem though. You can take yeah. it. Yeah, yeah can the Marines can't shoot down. Yeah. A missile turret. That's an interesting strategy. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's making double short thing the observer for high ground vision. I'm not sure. Yeah. This or is... like maybe when behind Dark Shrine, he, 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 he got the, the last game, so why not the missile turret here? Yeah, sure. It's not that bad. Still no orbital command and 10 out of 16 workers. Yeah. Um, so many cannons. No natural at home but from Tux. Yeah, but he is trying to prepare for expansion at least. There is some uh, probes sent down there. And I think the sooner the better. Like this is a mass, since there are no siege tank, this would actually take a while to clear out. Yeah, it should cancel that last cannon. But yeah, no, this is going to be um, quite troublesome. I wonder if Tux knew about how high ground vision works for cannons, or maybe like... Maybe he forgot that in the heat of the moment here, because this is a bit unnecessary. Yeah, <laughs> uh, definitely. Uh, Meanwhile, if we uh, consider the transitions into the normal game, we can see that the uh, Nexus is halfway down on location and the command center is not on location. And in the income, it Tux actually has been able to build more probes and therefore have a better income because uh, Seppuku's macro has been slipping up. Yeah, the distraction is working very well. Uh, I actually think maybe he put on Mr. Turret because he's expecting a Stargate follow up. It's very common on the ladder to have a Stargate push behind this, where you get some shield batteries and you yeah. run shield. in and in and out with void rate. Yeah. yeah, very hard to stop sometimes. Oh, Planetary Fortress is coming out. He know he can't lift that right. That was the biggest mistake of this match. Oh, I can only imagine he think that he can lift that. Yeah. Ay 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 in the chat. Ay ay ay, good memes. Uh, yeah, this this base. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this building can move, but if you upgrade it with these cannons, then it can no longer move, and it's a permanent upgrade. So he's now he now has a base building here instead of here. So uh, yeah, that's uh, not optimal. No, this is not good at all. No. At least he won't get pushed into his main, because that planetary fortress will pretty much stop everything coming up that ramp. But uh, this is not good enough. Uh, Tuxis is expanding like crazy. 
Yeah, like turtling on one base, you're not going. No, no matter what unit you're going to make, even if it's the latest tech or whatever, it's not going to be enough of them if you're only on one base economy. Yeah, it's chrono boosting the probes. Yeah, it's just probes and pylons from here. Oh, the Stargate is already ready. He's preparing the ultimate Doom army for this guy. Yeah. Getting the ear upgrades. <laughs> wow. The, uh... <laughs> I, want to, I want to say there's hope, but there's there's really not now. I don't I don't see it actually. How? If we look in the army tab. Uh, it's only four stalkers and a few other units against 20 marines, but uh, there's no steam or medivacs to help the marines. So uh... the, the question you have to ask yourself is how many battle cruisers are there? <laughs> yes. That's the <laughs> because real... that's the attacking army. That's definitely the real question. Oof. There is siege tank coming out now. Yeah, and now he's supply blocked as well. Very supply blocked. Maybe if Tux uh, sacrifices his army, he just run, runs into the planetary on the ramp. Like a misjudgment like that could possibly bring him back in the game. Sure. Because he will clear that Logan pretty soon with the tank, I imagine. And he's preparing for a new command center as well. I wonder if... Yeah, you see that the, the, the factory in the Terran main had a tech lab add-on, but... He moved it away from the add-on to be able to build a command center. I wonder if his base is so filled with buildings that he literally couldn't put the command center anywhere in his base. Yeah, he's gonna need to put more... Yeah, uh, I'm actually pretty sure that's the case. It really looks that way. Because that space in the top in the base is actually very small compared to how it looks. Yeah. So uh, let's see if we'll see a hidden run void ray attack or something like that. I may, I'm not sure if the uh, game has transitioned into the chat. Um, Tux is he is in the command center, but uh, I, I, I don't see this working. I just don't. Oh, now the void ray shows up. Oh, 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 oh. Not the missile turret, perhaps. There's a lot of orders. Are the marines stuck? Uh, no, they're moving around. Here we are, prismatic alignment, clearing out some buildings. Oh. So uh, Tux is helping Seppuku with more space in the base, base space. So now he's being able to make more base if uh, if he wants to in his base. Yeah, uh, he's actually. I I, I honestly feel like he's kind of trolling now because he's building even more planetary fortresses and just turrets and planetary fortresses. Like to me, this doesn't feel like a serious attempt at all. Yeah, that's also a planetary fortress, and this command center planetary fortress. No, this this is this is. A, I would say this this is just uh, <laughs> probably probably two friends duking it out. This this is not a serious attempt. Yeah. Those orders will. Flies through everything of, of the defenses. We got a few stalkers to good for good measure. Yeah, there's like one loiter for every marine right now. Every marine got a personal loiter to help them out. Oh oh, where is going? He goes and takes a look and then types, holy shit. 
Yeah, but we have carriers on the way. Yeah. And this is definitely a killing move. Have you gotten the... At least you should get the... Turret upgrades, if you really want to turtle like a pro. You should get the building armor and the, and the, and the turret range. Sure. Like, right now, one Tempest would end the game. Permanently. Yeah. I think if, if the guys in the chat have some salt emotes, now would be a good time to bring those up. Because there is definitely a salt mine in this terrain base here. Yeah. This is gay salt in the chat. <laughs> oh no, he steps to four where it was first carrier. Yeah, so now uh, when the Tempests are out, the Tempests are able to outrange the turrets, so uh, there's no yeah, way is, really to win. This is definitely the end. Yeah, and there's a more, enough carriers to be able to push back the turrets. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So that means that we have a software engineer that advances from the group in second place after the physics division uh, in EG Idra. Wow! Congratulations, Turks! Wow! It has been clap, a clap. clap, clap, clap. Long time coming this victory, but. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's been called hard. But uh, it feels like we have had a uh, a lot of good games today. Uh, some very, yeah, very even close even. and very back and forth. Pretty even feel. Idra definitely the big winner today, crushing crushing both his matches. Yeah, going 4-0. That's very interesting. So we'll be able to see him uh, moving on to the uh, uh, playoffs next week. Are the players uh, brackets going to be seeded uh, depending if you advance first or not? Or from yes. The group? Okay, there are. That is correct. Then there actually has an advantage going forward. Yes. So let's. I will show you how the um, brackets looks now. So this is how the. Uh, tournament ended up today uh, so we can see here clearly who won and who advanced uh, and we can see also if we want to look at tomorrow's group it's going to look like this 
So tomorrow we're going to see also software engineering and the physics department, but we're also going to see the computer science and the maritime department being represented. So I that's going to be exciting. Are going to be played. Yes, that's going to be very nice. Uh, seeing it in the chat even, uh, so that's nice. Uh, so I hope there's going to be more people looking out and cheering for them. Uh, so um, that means that we are done with today's live stream, I believe. We have okay. we have concluded all matches, and we have uh, decided on two winners are moving on. We're going to continue the action tomorrow with the next group. <laughs> Also at 18 o'clock, so don't miss it. Yes, I wanted to thank, uh, thank uh, Lagit for top notch organizing and uh, for having me as a guest here. And uh, uh, possibly I will be back some other day casting more groups. Yes, we'll see. Uh, well, uh, I hope all the watchers are having a good time, and we from Lagit will see you all tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye-bye.